Might you be Sir Eugene Lionheart? Yes, that's me. My name is Hera, and I am a wizard of the Red Tower of Magic. The Tower Master is waiting upstairs. He planned to be here to greet you personally, but a small problem cropped up that's keeping him occupied. Hmm, there seems to have been some sort of accident. This is rather common among the different types of magic. Summoning magic? Um, it has the highest risk of failure. This is just going too far. It looks like we really have a couple amazing geniuses on our hands. How, just how on earth, did you all manage to summon a shadow beast from a circle meant to summon a lava shark? What do you think would have happened had the shadow beast got loose? A shadow beast only desires destruction over a hundred people could have died before it was caught. We, we, we are so sorry. Pack your bags and leave immediately. As Loberian descended to the ground, he gave Eugene a broad smile. It's been a long time, Eugene. You've grown a lot. To be honest, I almost didn't recognize you. Master Liberian, you haven't changed at all. Well, so what? It's just because I'm holding on to my youth with my magic. After all, isn't it better to have a youthful appearance than an aged one? Although Liberian seems different from when Eugene saw him four years ago, Eugene was unable to sense mana back then. However, now that Eugene had met Liberian once more, he now knew for sure. Liberian was strong, but it looks like he has a long way to go before reaching Sienna's level. I've heard the news from Gilead. So, you are interested in magic? Yes, sir. Magic is an extremely engaging field of study, although it's just as difficult to learn as it is interesting. But if it's you, Eugene, you should be able to do well. Liberian could feel a presence from behind the closed door that barred the entrance to the tower's first floor. He felt uncomfortable with how this presence was lingering there, not daring to open the door. Liberian shot the door a glance. It was Iod Lionheart. That fucking <coughs> bastard. Eugene's eyes began to burn with an inner fire as he looked at Iod. He's bragging about how he's regularly getting his life force sucked away by succubi. Shouldn't you at least come out to greet your younger brother? Hmm. I'm not quite sure what I should say. It's nice to meet you, big brother. Let's get along well from now on. Eugene put some force into his voice as he glared at Iod. Uh, all right. What do you even think you're doing? If you have nothing else to do, go upstairs and at least read a book. Yes, sir. If it hadn't been a request from his old friend Gilead, Loberian would have never allowed Iode to remain in his tower. Really now? Please accept my regrets for showing you such shameful sights as soon as you've arrived. Don't worry, it's fine. So I've heard from Gilead that you are unwilling to receive personal lessons in magic from me. It's just that I don't want to burden you unnecessarily, Head Wizard. Also, if I learn magic from Master Liberian, many people will look at the Lionheart clan with dissatisfaction. So, for the time being, I would like to study the field of magic on my own. Very well. Then let's do it like that. Unless you asked me to, Eugene, I will not interfere with your studies. However, if you ever need help, Feel free to ask Hera for assistance at any time. Yes, thank you. Just stay in the tower. It might not be as luxurious as the main family's mansion, but it's an adequate place to live. If that's the case, would it be alright if I take a look at the library first? It had already been a month since he had come to the Red Tower of Magic. Without skipping a single day, Eugene had visited the library daily. He was in the library from early in the morning and only returned to his room when it was late at night. He wasn't just spending all his time on magic. He woke up a few hours before he needed to head to the library each day to train his mana, and before going to sleep, he worked out. Sienna's system was based on the circle's system of magic. This system involved guiding the mana inside the body into a circular flow, and then allowing this flow to draw out the mana from within the body when a spell was cast. When the amount of mana controlled exceeded what a single circle could handle, the number of circles increased, and these circles were able to overlap with each other. In just a month, he had read all the books of magic that were stored in the Red Tower of Magic's library, although I'm still only at the theory level for now. While this had filled in the holes in his knowledge, he had yet to properly begin practicing magic. I expect that you're going to be attempting to use the Circle's magic formula, correct? Yep. The Circles have proven to be the most effective and logical system of magic. I'm considering trying to change things up a bit. You're going to make some changes? It doesn't seem like a good idea. So Eugene, you haven't even taken your first steps into magic yet. Wouldn't it be better to start with the orthodox method first and then study how to adapt the circles after you've reached a certain level? 
I'm planning on combining the circles with the Lionheart's mana formula. So Eugene, the mana system used for martial arts and the mana system used for magic are two different paths. Hera was genuinely concerned for Eugene. If he ran out of mana during the attempt, then the magic formula could collapse within him. This could result in him being unable to use mana for the rest of his life or even death. That's why I'd like to test combining the two systems. It won't be all that dangerous. Hera finally conceded. Huh. For now, why don't you give it a shot? However, if the mana flow seems dangerous, I will be ready to intervene immediately. If you get injured, Sir Eugene, it won't just be me who gets in trouble. The Tower Master will also find himself in a precarious position. Yes, ma'am. I'll be starting now. The white flame formula guided mana into the stars around his heart. The circles guided mana into a circular flow. I just have to try and apply them together. The circles can be replaced with the stars. The resonance between the stars can amplify the mana. Depending on the situation, I'll have to make instantaneous adjustments to the mana. It'll be a pain if he mispredicts it and makes a mistake. Not only could she feel how pure the mana that Eugene had drawn out from his core was, but she could also tell how powerful it was. So this was the descendant of the Great Vermouth, the man known as the God of War and the Master of All. How could a 17-year-old youth like Eugene possibly draw out vast quantities of mana? No way. From the First Circle's basic spell, the Fireball, it had been converted into another First Circle spell, the Magic Missile. Hera, who had been watching all this with dazed eyes, said, You, you are amazing. Please summon a monster for me. I'd like to check the power of my spell. Then, are you fine with a golem? This golem is made from carbrium. Even without it using any defensive techniques, any attacks against it will have their forces scattered on impact. Sounds great. So you're saying that, young Eugene used the core of the white flame formula as a circle and used it to cast magic? Yes, sir. The purity and density of his mana were absurd, so much so that it was hard to believe that he was just a novice wizard. No matter what type of magic he could have chosen to cast, the power of his offensive spell would probably be greater than that of a third circle wizard. He was able to substitute the mana from a circle with that of the white flame formula all on his own? That was a monstrous level of talent, to the point where Lobarian actually felt fear instead of admiration. Is the White Flame formula just that special? At a guess, does the third star of the White Flame formula correspond to a third circle wizard? Did you say that Eugene has gone out? Do you think it would seem absurd for me to write a letter of recommendation requesting Eugene's entry into Akron? Huh? Aroth's Royal Library, Akron. Only a few high-ranking wizards of the Towers of Magic nobles of high status, and members of royalty were allowed entry into that place. I don't think it would be too unreasonable. I believe that he deserves the opportunity. Eugene was able to use magic after only reading introductory texts on magic for a month, and the spell that he cast pierced the hole through the armor of a carbium golem. That's why I've decided to write Eugene a letter of recommendation. It's definitely not unreasonable. If he really is a monster of such talent, he should receive the appropriate treatment. I'm afraid that the other wizards might be dissatisfied by this. If they're still dissatisfied once they know the truth, that just means that they're refusing to acknowledge the facts and are blinded by their jealousy. By the way, what sort of appointment did Eugene leave to attend? There shouldn't be anyone he's familiar with in Arath. He said he was going out to meet a friend. A friend? Loberian tilted his heat in curiosity as he stamped his seal onto the letter of recommendation. Maryden Square, in front of the Green Tower of Magic. The statue's face had a confident smile. Eugene recognized that face. Sienna used to put on such an expression whenever she had managed to accomplish something great with her magic and turned to look at him smugly. Is that really you, Eugene? Gargath? Yes, it's me, Gargath Lionheart. Have you already forgotten my name? It's not that I've forgotten it, but you... are you really 18 years old? Was it possible for him to grow such a beard when Gargath was only 18? Although it's not as much as I have, but you've also grown a lot. But you've grown a shit ton. I could tell from holding your hand just how much you've trained your body during these past four years. However, that still isn't enough. This is our family's revolutionary muscle growth agent. I've brought some here for you. Don't need it. 
Why not? Lord Gerhard's weight loss and muscle growth are all thanks to receiving help from our family. Weren't you aware of that already? Now that you've brought it up, please stop trying to send me those strange drugs through my father. So why did you ask to meet? You can't have come all this way to Aroth just to try and force that drug of yours onto me. Remember what I told you a long time ago? Our family's revolutionary muscle growth agent was created by a famous alchemist of Aroth. However, now that my body has grown, the current mixture can no longer meet my requirements. Do you know anything about Bolero Street? I've heard of it. It was the place where that spoiled bastard IOD went to play around. I've heard rumors that the testicles of a giant will be revealed at the latest auction. Test? What? A giant's testicles! Why do you want to buy a fucking thing like that? Weren't you aware? The testicles of a giant have great magical value. Let's go there together. Although I've brought a lot of money, it still might not be enough to win the bid. So you want me to lend you money? Gargath got on his knees and shouted. I need to buy the balls, I swear on my name, then I'll pay you back with interest. For fuck's sake, get up. You are making a scene. Apart from the giant's testicles, I've heard that many other items will be revealed. Oh, is that so? Aren't you at all interested in it? Then again, you do have Winniad already, so you probably can't lower yourself to look at ordinary weapons. There is someplace else in Bolero Street that interests me. Eugene was certain that Eodi would be heading to Bolero Street on the night of the next full moon. Since he already seemed to be suffering from nervous anxiety due to his succubus addiction, it was obvious that Eodi didn't have the strength of will to overcome the withdrawal symptoms. Bolero Street only opened on the night of the full moon. The next full moon would be in one week. As soon as he had returned to the Red Tower of Magic, he received a summons from Lobarian. Since he intended to ask about Iod, this worked out perfectly for Eugene. To start with, please feel free to take a seat. Um, may I ask why I was summoned? First of all, please take a look at this. A letter of recommendation? It's for Akron? No way. Even Eugene was familiar with that name. The prestigious Royal Library had already been famous 300 years ago. It was the place where the essence of Aroth's prided magic was stored. I think this is too much of an honor for me to accept at the moment. Although Eugene wanted to jump into the air and cheer in joy, for now he decided to hold back and check the situation. I don't share your thoughts. Instead, I believe that now is exactly the right time for you to enter Akron, Eugene. Since you haven't ventured deeply into learning magic, you still have a lot of possibilities lying ahead of you. There are many exceptional magical books in Akron. In the halls of Akron, ancient magic passed down from the mythical era was stored along with the writings of the sages, whose names had received the highest of acclaims throughout Aroth's long history. Does Akron also have books written by Lady Sienna? Of course it does. Although there are books authored by Sienna in both the Red Tower of Magic and the Green Tower of Magic, one of the original three volumes of Witchcraft, which Sienna wrote in her later years, is stored in Akron. Witchcraft was considered one of the most significant series of books in all of Aratha's history. The wise Sienna had summed up all of her magical knowledge and divided the essence of her wisdom into these three volumes. When I first read the first volume of Witchcraft, I realized that all the magic that I had learned in my life up until that moment was all just child's play. Although I can't guarantee that this letter of recommendation can be exchanged for an entry pass into Akron, I first wanted to hear your opinion, Eugene. Are you alright with me submitting a letter of recommendation on your behalf? Of course, it's fine with me, you bastard. Why ask such an obvious question? That would be the best outcome. Of course, that's fine with me. However, I'm still a bit concerned that my inadequacies will cause trouble for the Tower Master. Cause trouble, you say? Haha. Ha. Don't worry about that. Something like this won't cause me any trouble at all. Hopefully he won't change his mind if I ask him something that might upset him. Master Liberian, that's, um, I have something that I need to talk to you about concerning my older brother, Iode. From the first day I came to Aroth, Iode hasn't been focusing on practicing magic, and is instead going into some shady street to partake in the nightlife. Ah. Uh. As expected, Lobarian was already aware of Iod's misdeeds, Eugene thought. This is... I'm not sure how to put it into words. I'd even warned him a few times. But I've been unable to prevent Iod from indulging in that debauchery. Succubi are a famous breed of night demons. In the past, before Helmuth was opened up, many people had died because the succubi drained all their life force. However, with the opening up of Helmuth, the attitudes of the demon kings and their demon folk subjects underwent a lot of changes. The same goes for the succubi. 
While they still absorb life force, they don't kill people like they used to. It has been strictly forbidden by the Queen of the Night Demons who resides in Helmuth. That still doesn't make my brother's lustful affairs appropriate. Yes, you're right, of course. Please have a little sympathy for Iod. Huh? Four years ago, Iod came to Arath with a lot of expectations, but, unfortunately, Iod's talent failed to live up to his own hopes and expectations. Iod experienced a lot of setbacks. The magic mages and I did our best to help Iod overcome the frustration from these setbacks, but, unfortunately, it didn't go so well. Moreover, with his status, Iod couldn't help but be weighed down by many expectations. Wouldn't it be better to give him some time to catch his breath? That's what we thought at the time. It was a way for him not to have a breakdown. Eugene knew just how high-strung Tannis was and well aware of how sly Ancilla could be. Sion and Ciel had been born with both talent and ambition. Those two wished to become the next patriarch because they wanted to meet the expectations of those around them and also fulfill their own desires, which made Iod's mom furious with him. Upon having his hopes for Aroth betrayed, Iod had decided not to return to the main estate, probably because he felt it was still better to live in Aroth than to return to that suffocating main estate. Although Eugene understood that Iod's situation was pitiful, getting involved with a succubus was going too far. Demon folk, who had changed their attitudes and put smiles on their faces, were still demon folk. They would never be able to peacefully coexist with humans. Eugene, no. Hamill was all too aware of this fact. I'll need to take a look personally. Why do we have to use transformation magic? It would be bad for the name of Lionheart if its descendants were to be seen in an illegal alley. What's that ringing sound? Eugene had bought this communication terminal to keep in touch with an accomplice who was somewhere down this long and shady Bolero Street. Have you arrived, sir? How did you know? The max range of this terminal's connection is about the same as the length of Bolero Street. I knew you were here when the signal came in. I will call you once I see Iode. Iode might also be using transformation magic. How will you find him? There's no need for that concern. Io doesn't use transformation magic. I've heard that he wears the same robe every time he goes there. He is a crazy fool. IOD seemed to be enjoying the attention he received from secretly revealing his identity. If he was my son, I'd beat him up to get him to fix his bad habits. What was that all about you seem upset? Like I said, I have business to do here, so let's go for the auction for now. As they entered the auction house, they were informed, it is forbidden to intrude into other guests' rooms, and any conversation should be kept between the two of you. Although Bolero Street held more than a few auction houses, all auction houses shared the same rule of keeping the bidding private. Everyone was guided to a different room, keeping the bidding anonymous. To start bidding, press the blue button. To increase your bid, press the gold button. And for assistance, press the red button. I thought you wouldn't be interested in spectating the auction. I need to do something to pass some time, and I'm a little curious about what might come out. On this truly beautiful night of the full moon, we thank you for finding your way to our auction house. Our auction house mainly deals in rare magical materials sourced from Helmuth. Our first item is the Horn of the Valorix. Let's start the bidding at 10 million sales. The fruit of a Prosha, the roots of a Mandragora, the flower buds of a Userac. Oh my, there's even a living Tura spider. This little guy's poison. Are you sure that the giant's testicles will come out tonight? It will. It will come out. I heard it would be in the auction tonight. The next item is a metal object made from an unappraisable mineral. Our auction has been unable to see through the true value of this material, but perhaps one of the guests visiting us today may have some insight into this metal object's true value. This metal object was found in Helmuth's Khazard Hills. If it's placed in moonlight, it gives off an extremely beautiful light. It might be a good option as an ornament to place by your bedroom window as it shines quite beautifully under the light of the moon. We will start the bidding at a million sales. Eugene immediately pressed the button. Eugene? Uh, would you like to place a bid? A million sales. Eugene called out without any hesitation. He knew what that piece of metal was, a dim blade that barely shone when out of the moonlight, destruction in the form of a sword, a sword that had been erased from history, the moonlight sword. Why did you bid on such a useless item? Vermouth had wielded numerous weapons in his life, and among them, there were quite a few powerful relics capable of turning the world on its head. I was right. This was definitely a fragment of the Moonlight Sword. But how on earth did a fragment of the Moonlight Sword end up in this auction house? 
the Khazard Hills. The place where this fragment had been found was further proof of its true identity. They had discovered a dungeon that had been hidden deep underground. They had explored the dungeon and found the Moonlight Sword at its very heart. The only possibility that I can think of is that, as Vermouth was leaving Helmuth, he took the Moonlight Sword back to its original resting place and sealed it there. Maybe Vermouth couldn't have felt reassured by just sealing such a dangerous sword, and instead destroyed it. The fragment of the Moonlight Sword was perfectly still. It didn't give off any sense of danger. Well, if it had shown off even a trace of the terrible power that it had held 300 years ago, it wouldn't have been left on auction for so long without any bidders. So Eugene, Sir IOD has arrived. I'm leaving now. Don't you want to keep watching? I don't. Before I go, I'll leave my card with you, so you can bid for the item you want. Where do I need to go? Um, if you head up to the north end of the street, you will be able to find a store called Rafflesia. That's where you need to go. Are you here for our services? Since his reincarnation, this was his first time encountering a demon folk. If he was still in his previous life, the demon would already have been dead before their eyes had even met but Eugene didn't reveal a single trace of his murderous intent. The base entrance fee is two million sales. After that, any further cost is calculated according to the contents and length of your requested dream. Would you still like to enter? Without replying, Eugene pulled out his wallet and handed the demon two checks. Please enjoy your time here. Bring me the best food you have. I want extra servings of meat. Yes, sir. There's the bastard. He didn't know how much Iode had drunk, but he was stumbling up the stairs. That alone would have been enough to piss Eugene off, but Iode wasn't alone in his climb. He's not just playing around with night demons, he's even getting carried by demons? Eugene checked the direction Iode and his unknown companions were heading in. He started following Iode. But where are they going? After they had passed several blocks, still supporting Iode on their shoulders, the group entered a particular building that didn't have any signage. After confirming that everyone had entered without leaving anyone outside, Eugene walked closer to the building. Hey kid, you're in the wrong neighborhood. This isn't some kind of store, so get lost. Then what kind of place is this? Didn't I tell you to get lost? Do you think that we have the time to joke with a brat like you? It does sound like you are a joke. Eugene pulled on the arm that was clutching his collar, this pulled the man's forward, bringing it in reach for a swing of Eugene's fist. Before the man could even finish speaking, he had already lost consciousness. You crazy bastard. What the hell do you think you're doing? I will kill you! Now then, why don't you tell me what goes on in there? Oh, they are all unconscious. Instead of listening to you, it should be faster and simpler to just take a look inside by myself. With a sharp kick, Eugene broke the lock off the door. While this caused the door to swing open and Eugene entered without any hesitation, it was hard to see in front of him as the whole floor had been filled with a thick cloud of smoke. It numbed his senses and caused his vision to go slightly dizzy. So this must be opium. I can understand needing a place where he could catch his breath, but this is going way too far. Just the dreams from a succubus alone were enough to weaken and ruin his mind, but if he was huffing drugs in an opium den on top of that, he was practically drilling holes in his brain. Who are you? How did you get in here? There should have been guards outside. Wow, a human beast folk and demon folk getting along and doing drugs together. That's racial harmony at its finest. If guys like you were born 300 years ago, the world might have been able to hold our hands together in love and peace. What the hell is this bastard talking about? Get him! Eugene created a few magic missiles and sent them piercing through the smoke. Where is EOD? Gah. You don't need to tell me. I can just look for him myself. A fierce breeze engulfed Winnied. A sylph summoned by Eugene was actually able to create a gust so strong that it suddenly scattered. Gusts of wind blowing in all directions scattered the smoke and smashed open all the walls and tightly locked doors on this floor. He had scattered a number of sylphs along with the gusts of wind, and they were now blowing through the entire building. They soon told him where he needed to go, the third level.
there was only one room at the end of this hallway, which meant Iode had to be in that room. Without even opening the door, someone inside the room attacked Eugene by casting a spell that burst through the door. Eugene pulled out the fragment of the Moonlight Sword that he had bought at the auction house. The spell was split into dozens of strands that swept across the surrounding walls. What an astounding performance. The Moonlight Sword's characteristics could still be seen from this small fragment. If you had hit me with that attack just now, the power could have killed me. The spell he had cast had already revealed his identity as a black wizard. He had cast that spell with a resolve to kill, but it had somehow been blocked using some unknown method. Had this intruder used magic just now? But how had he never heard of a defensive spell with such an effect? Who are you? Escaping from reality through a dream made by a succubus was pathetic but understandable. However, Iode had crossed the line this time. Drugs were already a step too far, but he was even consorting with a fucking <laughs> bastard who used black magic. Don't get involved with black magic. Gilead had even given Eugene a stern warning about such conduct before he left for Aroth, but what did Gilead's real son think he was doing, paling around with someone who could even be called Vermouth's enemy? Get out of the way. If you run away now, I won't have to try and catch you. I already thought you were a cheeky brat, but that's... Do you even realize where you are now and in whose presence you're behaving so rudely? Kill him! The demon folk who had been supporting Iode on the way here from the restaurant. The stars around his heart began to resonate as white flames flared up to cover Eugene's body. Come at me. The two demons directly threw themselves at Eugene. In the next moment, Eugene took a step forward. The wind wrapped around his sword exploded. Blood spurted out from the chest of the demon who had rushed closest to Eugene. The second demon lengthened its fingernails into blade-like claws and swiftly slashed at Eugene. The demon's arm was completely severed at the wrist before it could even complete its swing. The demon didn't even get a chance to scream in pain. Having already gotten into reach, Eugene's hand grabbed the demon by its face. With this grip, Eugene smashed the demon's head through the wall. The, this is insane. That was the Lionheart main family's white flame formula? M might you be Sir Eugene Lionheart? Get out of the way. Nah, now hold on a moment. Allow me to explain the situation. Eugene had no intention of listening to his story. The Black Mage cast a spell in an attempt to kill Eugene, but how could he have imagined that his last-ditch effort could be cut through so easily? Eugene narrowed the distance between them in an instant. I'm going to die, or at least, that's what the Black Wizard thought. Eugene's sword stopped right in front of the Black Wizard's throat. Stay still. Unable to gulp out of fear that this would cause his throat to be sliced open, the Black Wizard trembled nervously. IOD was still intoxicated from all the alcohol and drugs he had taken. There laid a bowl containing a grotesquely jiggling mass of flesh. Could that be what I think it is? That's a unicorn's heart. Unicorns were monsters with such strong mana and divine power that they were called divine beasts. If it was meant to be used as a sacrifice, then a unicorn's heart was much more valuable than a human's. Is the other party a demon king? How could someone like myself arrange a contract with one of the Demon Kings? It's, it's Baron Ulfur of Helmuth. And just who is that bastard? He is an incubus who serves under Duchess Giabella. Noir Giabella was the queen of the Night Demons. Helmuth was a country ruled over jointly by the Demon Kings of Incarceration and Destruction. So what you're saying is, this damned bastard was about to sign a contract with a mere servant of Noir Giabella, an incubus who is nothing more than a baron? Is that what you're saying? So he was planning to offer up the heart of a unicorn while out of his mind on drugs and alcohol. Have I got all that right? It was Sir Iode's desire. I was only listening to Sir Iode's request. Sir Iode was also the one who gave me the money to purchase the heart of a unicorn. I, I just listened to Sir Iode's request. I mean his O order. Of course, you couldn't refuse him. After all, you must have been so excited. That idiot is still the eldest son of the Lionheart clan's direct line. On top of giving you money, he even wanted to make a contract with your master. If it had all worked out as planned, your strength would have increased greatly thanks to that fucking bastard named Ulfur. If the deal had been struck, you might even have been able to negotiate a contract with that bitch noir. You were willing to arrange this contract because you were also greedy for the results. So don't push all the blame onto others and keep your mouth shut if you want to live. The killing intent that Eugene was exuding was far too ferocious and frightening for him to dare open his mouth anytime soon. Eugene turned his gaze away from the Black Wizard to look at Iode, who was still lying on his back, eyes half open, and with drool dripping from his slack-jawed mouth. 
This son of a bitch. The heavy blow, which was loaded with all of Eugene's emotions, ah! woke Iod up from the haze of alcohol and drugs that had been clouding his mind. Have you come to your senses yet? Brother? Have you come to your senses yet? Why are you here? Geez, big brother, I have tried to sympathize with your situation, and I get that you're under a lot of stress, you know? Since your reality stinks like shit, I get that you might want to play around in the sweet depths of a succubus dream. But this is just going too far. You're not allowed to get involved with black magic. As the eldest son of the Lionheart's direct line, the man next in line to become the patriarch, how could you try and make a contract with a demon folk, and with something like an incubus at that? That's... I, I just couldn't help it. Ah! What do you mean, you couldn't help it? You crazy bastard. Do you even know what happens if you get into black magic with a contract instead of at least learning how to use it with the proper method? Your soul becomes the property of the demon folk. You become a slave who kills when told to kill and dies when told to die. Do you think that this is a problem that will affect only you? Do you truly understand what will happen if you become a black wizard? The first thing to fall into the gutter because of you would probably be the family's owner, but that's only the start of it. What if the demon folk you contracted with told you to kill your mother, then your father, and finally your siblings? What would you do if he asked you to bring him the main family's white flame formula and all the treasures in the treasure vault? He said that I wouldn't need to show him unconditional obedience. He said that he would treat me with proper consideration, that he wouldn't give me any impossible or irrational orders, that that's what he promised. Promise with that fucking incubus bastard. You idiot. Do you think that the demon folk are like the dragons or the elves? To them, breaking a promise is as easy as a flick of the wrist. You can refuse to obey his orders, as long as you're prepared to die, that is. But you, do you have the guts to do that? Could you disobey him if it meant that you would die instead? As if you could do something like that. You're just a bastard who can't even defend yourself and instead escapes into alcohol and dreams. Ye, you you what the hell gives you the right to judge me? Huh, fine then. You think there's something wrong with what I just said? Then why don't you have a go at defending yourself, big brother? You, you have no idea. You, ever since four years ago, everyone has been paying attention to you. Since you were adopted into the main family, the patriarch has been raining down support on you, so how could you... If someone else was listening to you, they might think you were being discriminated against. But you've also received a lot of support, haven't you, big brother? Weren't you also granted access to the ley line? And haven't you also inherited the white flame formula? Then, because you wanted to learn magic, they even sent you off to a Roth, and you were even given a chance to become the disciple of a tower master. Am I wrong? That I've been getting the same amount of support as you, big brother. I'm not this great because the patriarch favored me over you, but it's just because I was born this amazing. You're innately talented. It's impossible for me to compare to you. I also put in just as much effort to become great. I bet I've worked a lot harder than you. CL and Cyan are also training their hardest back at the main family mansion. All right, if you were able to sign a personal contract with Noir Giabella, you probably would have gotten pretty strong. But what would you do with all that strength? Do you really think that you'd be able to become the patriarch with the power of black magic? I never wanted to become the Lionheart clan's patriarch. I, I wanted to become a black wizard and go to Helmuth. In a place like that, I'd be free and my worth would be recognized. Ah! Ah! What did you just say? Which do you think is better, being recognized by your family or being recognized by the demon folk? And do you really think they would respect you? I think you've got something mixed up, big brother. Without your background as the eldest son of the main family, you really don't have any value to them. There was no value in continuing the conversation. You can talk to Sir Liberian. Take him. Head wizard. Iod attempted to speak even as his body continued trembling. This is... I was just... I didn't do it. I haven't started learning black magic. But you tried to, didn't you, Iod? You have tarnished the name of the Lionheart clan. You have insulted Sir Gilead, who trusted you and left you to my care. Also, you have insulted Samuel, who chose to teach you. And you have insulted me, who chose to overlook all your foibles. N no, I didn't intend to do any of that. I was just... 
If you continue to make any more excuses I will, I will just have to show you the cost of your insults immediately, and I really am tempted to do so, so please, don't say another word. Iode buried his head in his hands and burst into tears. Let us return. On the top floor of the Red Tower of Magic, along with Lobarian, Eugene, Gilead, and Tannis. It's nice to meet you. My name is Balzac Ludbeth. He was a powerful black wizard who had been occupying the seat of Black Tower Master for the past few decades. You dare sit here? Tannis couldn't contain her surging emotions. IOD was her only son, the one who was meant to become the next patriarch of the main family. Her beloved son had attempted to learn black magic. Tannis absolutely refused to accept such a terrible reality. Please calm yourself. This incident has nothing to do with the Black Tower Master. What kind of nonsense is that? Didn't you say that Iode was tempted into dabbling with black magic? But are you going to look me in the eye and expect me to believe that the Black Tower Master had nothing to do with it? The Black Tower of Magic does not hold authority over all the Black Wizards in Aroth. As for the Black Wizard responsible for this unfortunate affair, although we now know that his name is Gavid, he is not a member of the Black Tower of Magic. He is only a member of the Wizards Guild. Still furious, Tannis attempted to continue speaking, but Gilead raised his hand to prevent her from doing so. If you claimed that the Black Tower of Magic wasn't involved in this incident, why had Balzac insisted on being here? The reason I'm here is to take responsibility for this matter. Responsibility? Yes, for tempting Iode into learning black magic and arranging such a contract. Strictly speaking, these cannot be considered crimes. Hundreds of years ago, just learning black magic would cause one to be sentenced as a criminal and executed. However, after the treaty agreed upon between the Great Vermouth and the Demon Kings was signed, learning black magic became a personal right, though that might be the case. I hope to show proper regard to the Lionheart Clan's stance on this matter. I don't really like the sound of your words. It sounds like you're saying that, for the sake of the Lionheart Clan's prestige, you're willing to bow your head in apology even though you don't really need to. Have I got that right? Yes. However, I wish to take responsibility anyway, as a fellow Black Wizard, because I have no desire to lose the current amicable peace that we have maintained with the Lionheart Clan because of this incident. Crimes involving drugs are governed by the law of Aroth. Everyone caught in the drug den will be confined in Aroth's prison. Then how exactly are you supposed to be taking responsibility? Baron Eowyn Olfair, the incubus with whom Gavid is currently contracted and who attempted to sign a contract with Sir Iode to be beheaded, the Demon King of Incarceration has sent a personal message. Eugene took firm hold of his body, which was about to react unconsciously. He held back his rage. The Demon King of Incarceration would like to convey his immense disappointment over causing such distress to the family of his good friend Vermouth. As such, he declares that he will personally beheed Eowyn Ulfer, and if desired, he can have the head delivered directly to the Lionheart clan. His good friend Vermouth? While this arrangement may not be enough to appease your anger, Lord Patriarch, please know that neither the Demon King of Incarceration nor the Black Tower of Magic have any desire to offend the Lionheart clan. Well then, I look forward to meeting you again under more pleasurable circumstances. With this farewell, Balzac made to leave. Before he exited the room, he shot a glance at Eugene. Eugene felt this gaze. There was a short silence. I'm sorry, Eugene. Could I ask you to step outside for a minute? Yes, sir. Master Loberian, I'm afraid that I've made a grave error. All of this is my fault. Not at all. If I had only been more strict with Iod, something like this wouldn't have happened. My sincere apologies. I will take Iod back with me to the main estate when I return. We don't need to take Iod back home with us, do we? Iod isn't... He hasn't truly dabbled in black magic. He just made an attempt, that's all. Since he knows that he's made a mistake, he won't do something like that again. If we treat this as a lesson, then he might even work harder from now on. So can't we just... In over 300 years of the Lionheart Clan's history, there has never been a single member of the main family who became a Black Wizard. I will not change my decision. Even though Iode is my son, what that child has done has tarnished the clan's name. I cannot possibly allow the boy to remain in Aroth. But what place is left for our child at the main estate? While Iode was off in Aroth, Tian and Ciel were busy winning the approval of the members of the main 
Lane family, it was impossible for the Iode, who would return after causing a scandal, to obtain the main family member's approval at this point. You've done nothing to secure Iode's position. Instead, you've only listened to every demand of that damned Ancilla and her children, as well as that adopted child who doesn't even share a single drop of blood with you. Do you really believe that? I have given my children everything they have asked for. I sent Iode to Aroth because he wanted to learn magic. If that was for Iode's sake... Tannis leaped out of her seat with this loud outburst. As she gasped for breath, she alternately glared at Loberian and Gilead. Then you should have made sure that Iode became Loberian's disciple no matter what. And if you were truly worried about Iode going wrong, you should have sent someone to monitor and control that child. Please, just stop. Please don't bring any more shame onto the Lionheart clan and to myself. Shame? Don't be ridiculous. If he returns to the main estate like this, I'll be the one who can't bear the shame of it all. I would much rather die than see that happen. If you're determined to take Iode back with you, then I will take Iode back to my family's estate. I would rather have him stay at my family's home, where he can learn magic without fear of being oppressed. If that's what you desire, as long as Iode agrees, you may do as you please. Sir Eugene Lionheart, can we speak alone for a moment? You weren't able to speak comfortably despite this being our first meeting, under these circumstances. I have no desire to have a conversation with you. It looks like you don't like me very much. It's not just you. I despise all black wizards. Is that so? Although 300 years may have passed, the public's perception of black magic still isn't very pleasant. As a black wizard myself, I can't help but feel that it's unfortunate. Although it might seem unreliable coming from my lips, I haven't done anything wrong. I've heard a lot about you, Sir Eugene. Your performance in the Bloodline Continuation Ceremony has been famous for several years now, and I've also heard that recently you've shown a few great accomplishments in magic as well, and also received the Red Tower Master Letter of Recommendation for Akron, although I wasn't able to tell you this inside the room. Part of the responsibility that I've decided to take for this incident also involves you, Sir Eugene. What do you mean by that? It will be difficult for you to qualify for admission into Akron with just a letter of recommendation from the Red Tower Master. Unfortunately for you, Sir Eugene, the other Tower Masters and Wizards involved in making the decision will reject you because you lack the necessary qualifications. So I will write a letter of recommendation as well. How come? Why would you go to that extent? I hold a great interest in your talent, Eugene. And, well, that's not the only factor. Another factor is that I don't have the best of relationships with Head Wizard Liberian. While I don't hold any bad feelings towards him, the Red Tower Master dislikes me just because I am a Black Wizard. While I don't expect that alone will be enough to make you like me, but won't it at least reduce your dislike of me? It will also show my sincerity to get along with the Lionheart Clan. If you are offering to write one for me, I will gladly accept your help. But even if I do, I can't promise to be friendly with you though. As long as you don't dislike me as much as you do now, that will be enough. That's all that I wanted to say. My apologies for keeping you here. Did you have nothing to do with my older brother's issue? I take great pride in being a black wizard. The existence of an incompetent black wizard is just a disgrace to black magic. Even if he is the eldest son of the Lionheart family, as long as he doesn't possess astounding talent, I would never consider offering him a chance to join us. Is that enough to answer your question? Eugene got furious as he recalled the sight of Iode trembling as tears poured down his face. Pathetic bastard. Eugene, you can have the unicorn's heart. Since you've gone through a lot of trouble because of Iode, shouldn't you at least take something like that as compensation? There were several methods for using the unicorn's heart. Although eating it directly was an okay way to go about it, Eugene didn't choose to use such a barbaric method. While circulating the white flame formula, he reached out to the heart. This is the cleanest and easiest way to do it. Eugene did not lose focus as he examined the purity of the mana. Good, there aren't that many impurities. The mana contained within was drawn out completely before being absorbed by Eugene. It seems like I might be able to reach the fourth star before I turn 20. If the people at the main estate had heard this, they might have fainted from the surprise. In the 300 years of the Lionheart clan's history, not a single ancestor had managed to reach the fourth star before becoming an adult. The Patriarch and Gion are at the sixth star. Vermouth had reached the tenth star. Reaching the sixth star alone was enough to get you recognized as one of a handful of the strongest warriors on the continent. It looks like I'll have to start mixing things up before I reach the fifth star. Since he had already learned a lot of things from his previous life, he felt that he might as well meld the formula together with everything he had inherited from Hamill. They cost 300 million cells. Motherfucker. <laughs>
If we don't make the deposit before noon today, the right to purchase them will be transferred to the next highest bidder, so we need to hurry. Can't we just let them have it? A black card. Do you have any interest in opening up a separate personal account? If you make one now... No. Let's head to my place. Why? They said they'd make the delivery as soon as they received our deposit. Are you telling me to go all the way to your place just to get a look at those giant balls? Are you insane? On second thought, let's head to your place. I knew you were interested. I can share some of their essence with you. I am not eating any. Although he didn't have any interest in those balls, he was interested in the red flame formula that had been improved by Gargath's family. He wanted to compare theirs to the white flame formula to see where the differences lay. Huh? Eugene gasped. In the square below the bank, among the teeming crowds, he had spotted a glimpse of purple hair. The moment he saw them, Eugene threw himself down the stairs without hesitation. Gargath called his name, but the sound of his voice couldn't reach Eugene's ears. The square below was packed with people, but Eugene rushed into the crowd without caring. A seemingly unnatural, brightly colored purple, that color was created by vast amounts of mana spreading through her hair. It's Sienna. He tried to speak, but words failed him. Sienna hadn't changed compared to 300 years ago. She probably wouldn't be able to tell who Eugene was. I'm Hamel, but I was reincarnated as Vermouth's descendant. Sienna wouldn't believe him so easily. She might even curse at him and tell him to stop with his bullshit. He would be thankful if she did, as it would mean that, despite the passage of 300 years, her personality hadn't changed all that much from what he could remember of her. Sienna. Then he reached out and tried to grab Sienna's wrist, but he couldn't get a hold of her. A ghost? Sienna's lips began to move. Although he couldn't hear her voice, Eugene could tell what she was trying to convey from her silent lip movements. I've found you. I've also found you, Sienna Merden. Sienna is alive. Maybe she was able to recognize my soul like Tempest did, or else she may have come looking for the necklace. There was probably some kind of spell cast on the necklace. Sienna knows that I've been reincarnated. However, it seemed like she was in a situation where she couldn't come to see him personally. So instead, she had sent an illusion to come looking for him. She must be sealed somewhere. Could she have done it to herself? Or was she sealed by someone? But who could have done it? A black wizard? A demon king? In any case, it's fine now that I know she's unable to move on her own. Cause you've come and found me this time. So next time, I'll be the one who goes and finds you. Eugene, where on earth did you run off to in such a hurry? None of your business, let's head back. Just show me your red flame formula. You've already learned the white flame formula, so why are you interested in the red flame formulas as well? I'm just curious. Well, it's not like it's difficult for me to show it to you. Can you not use the red flame formula without doing that? I can, it's just a mental thing. <sighs> Do as you wish. Can the red flame formula also split the core? The version of the Red Flame formula taught by the main family doesn't allow you to split off new cores, but various collateral branches have further developed the Red Flame formula. Thanks to the efforts of our amazing ancestors, our family has succeeded in increasing the number of stars that can be generated by the Red Flame formula to five stars. As far as I know, among all the versions of the Red Flame formula derived by the collateral lines, only a handful can generate five stars. I'm on the second star. The second star of the Red Flame formula was incomparably weaker than the second star of the White Flame formula, which Eugenia had already graduated from. Even though it's been developed over hundreds of years, the Red Flame formula is still limited to five stars. Vermouth, that bastard, really was one hell of a genius. The Direct Line's White Flame formula and the Collateral Line's Red Flame formula. The Red Flame formula taught to the knights who serve the Direct Line doesn't even allow you to split off your core. In this way, the gap between the direct and collateral lines could be narrowed, but never closed. No matter how hard I think about it, I just can't understand why. Vermouth wasn't such a petty bastard, but if it had enough potential, Eugene was thinking of trying to graft the red flame formula onto the white flame formula, but it looks like there's no need. I've seen enough. You're leaving already, but the giant's testicles should be arriving soon. I'll leave the fine inspection up to you. Didn't they say that Sienna left her last grimoire in Akron? The three-volume series, Witchcraft. Both Liberian and the Black Tower Master had also said that they would write a letter of recommendation for Eugene. Eugene felt that he could expect a positive reply to these letters of recommendation. 
There's no need to be in such a hurry. You waited 300 years. Just a bit more won't hurt, right, Sienna? This destroys the structure of a spell just by touching it, but such a tiny fragment can't disintegrate high-ranking spells. However, something like a low-level spell would be dispersed immediately. If that fragment doesn't interfere with my mana, and if it doesn't interfere with any spells I cast, then that means that the density of my mana increases with every increase in the level of my white flame formula. The 11th Laboratory. Concerning the 11th Laboratory in the basement of the Red, sounds of explosions and constant vibrations coming from there had been spreading since a few days ago. I will go check it out. Sir Eugene, are you inside? Sir Eugene, are you okay? Sir Eugene. What kind of 17-year-old has a body like that? Hera wondered in disbelief. I, I'm so sorry. I should have waited for a reply before entering, but there was a loud noise. What you were doing, m may I ask what that was exactly? I was training my mana. I also combined that with some magic practice. I don't see any magic circles, but what's that? The surrounding floor had been cracked and overturned, but the area beneath the fragment was intact without any traces of damage. Like this. He's gotten even faster just now. Did he personally activate his mana and use his cores like they were circles? Hera asked herself in disbelief. The absence of an incantation was no longer a surprise. No one would believe that these were just a first circle magic missile and fireball. Are you practicing warfare magic? I was more focused on training the overall quality of my mana. It looks like you've achieved quite some results. It, it's fine as long as you're not hurt. But Sir Eugene, please don't push yourself too far. Yes, I'll be careful. Did you come all the way here just because you were worried about me? Although I was a bit worried, the head wizard asked me to fetch you. Are we going up to the top floor? No, the head wizard is actually far away. He is in Akron. Within the capital city of Aroth, Pentagon, in the center lies the royal castle of Aroth, named Abram. Built at the heart of a great lake, Abram cannot be entered without riding a boat to get there. This was because Abram and the lake surrounding it were completely covered by a magic sealing spell. 300 years ago, the wise Sienna developed the magic sealing spell. This was offered as a gift to the royal family by Sienna. And even now, after hundreds of years had passed, it was still working as perfectly as ever. They were currently at the Royal Library Akron. Eugene alternated between looking up at the tall clock tower of Akron and over the lake at Abram. That's just crazy, Eugene thought. Thanks to the fact that he had recently been diligently studying books on magic, he had reached a general understanding of magic. It didn't seem possible to cover all of that huge lake and the royal castle with a magic sealing spell. Isn't it amazing? Do you want to go and visit Abram? I'm just staring because it's so amazing, but it isn't a place I can visit just because I want to, right? Correct. Because only great nobles and tower masters are allowed to visit Abram. Ah, but if it's you, Sir Eugene, you might be able to go there. Because I'm a lion heart? That's part of it, but if you do receive permission to enter Akron, you may also receive a summon from the royal palace. Three people disagreed with you being recommended into Akron, the blue and green magic tower, and the mage guild master. Well then, I'll be heading back now, Sir Eugene. Don't be too nervous. Good luck. Yes, I'll do my best. My name is Eugene Lionheart. Liberian Balzac, along with the rest of the five tower masters, stared down at Eugene. Raise your head. Since a few years ago, your name has often reached my ears. I had hoped that I might be able to meet with you. Hanan wasn't just the crown prince of Aroth. He's a fifth circle wizard. He was a certified genius. Eugene recalled, Eugene Lionheart, I've heard many rumors about you, but for you to arrive here, both the Red Tower Master and the Black Tower Master have been praising you to the point that it seems like an exaggeration. Ah, but of course, I'm well aware of the fact that you are astounding. However, being able to swing a weapon and emit sword force isn't that completely different from being good at magic? A kid like that had been able to get letters of recommendation from two Tower Masters, a 17-year-old kid who had just started learning magic a few months ago. The Red Tower Master has long been friends with the Lionheart's Patriarch, and as for the Black Tower Master, I would have to guess that he wants to use this shameful affair as a chance to better his relationship with the Lionheart clan. I understand what you are trying to say, but what do I need to do to prove that I am worthy? All you need to do is show us your magic. These famous wizards who have gathered here today will take the chance to examine your skill in magic. Usually, we would look at the results of your research and the papers that you have worked on. But since you've never done any research, let alone worked on a thesis, I guess that will just have to do. If that's what you need, I will be starting then. 
As the stars around his heart began to shine, all the wizards in the room were staring at Eugene with calm expressions. Their eyes weren't focused on Eugene's body, but instead on the movements of his mana within his body. So the cores and circles aren't separate from each other. By making the different cores resonate with each other, they form one circle. Eugene had only created a single circle, but not a single wizard here believed that to be just a simple first circle. Eugene Lionheart has only been training his mana for four years now. The density of his mana, it's ridiculous. But that still isn't enough. Having excellent mana control is a completely different matter from having an excellent understanding of magic. One by one, Eugene showed off all the spells that he could cast. During the transformation process of his magic, Eugene never once uttered an incantation, and there was no wastage of mana, even when the magic was broken down to be reformed. Instead, all of the mana that had been used for the first spell was saved to be used in the next spell. Are you able to use magic and sword light simultaneously? Instead of replying immediately, Eugene directly showed it to them. Without stopping the transformation of his magic, his circle hadn't collapsed. While using a core in place of a circle and incantation less at that, what do you think now? I think we need to hold a discussion. I guess we do. Sir Eugene, would you be willing to wait outside for a few minutes? Yes, sir. Red Tower Master, are you sure that you haven't given him any guidance whatsoever? Haven't I already said it so many times? I haven't given Eugene any sort of guidance. He just read all sorts of books at the Red Tower. That just makes it even harder to understand. I have no intention of denigrating the quality of the magic books possessed by the Red Tower of Magic. Having only studied such introductory books on magic, could he have reached such an understanding of magic? He is a Lionheart after all, someone from the Lionheart clan of the Keel Empire, a descendant of the Great Vermouth. Everyone on the continent knows just how superb their bloodline is, right? I feel like we have met an indescribable genius in Eugene Lionheart. The spells that the Lionheart kid cast just now, although they were all first circle spells, their power far exceeded that of the first circle. You all felt that, right? Apart from the purity of his mana and the sophistication of his spell structures, what was particularly surprising was the cohesion of his mana. I believe that even a dispel at the level of a fourth circle wouldn't be able to dispel that kid's magic. But he's far too young. I can't help but acknowledge Eugene Lionheart's genius. We also need to consider Akron's prestige. As long as the Red Tower Master guides him personally for the next few years, there shouldn't be any problem with waiting for him to reach a level that makes it impossible for anyone to object before allowing him free entry into Akron. I think that it would be good to consider this as an investment, although he's young and his skills aren't quite up there. Isn't he overflowing with potential? So why don't we issue the entrance permit in advance so that we can build a friendly relationship with him? But even if that's the case, it's not like he'll be able to become the patriarch. One of the main family's twins, Cyan Lionheart. By order of inheritance, Iode Lionheart should have the advantage, but due to the latest unfortunate incident, since his skills were also quite lacking, it seems that Iode will have no choice but to be pushed out of the race for succession. Even if Eugene Lionheart is unable to become the Patriarch, his position in the main family will by no means be small. If he doesn't forget Aeroth's kindness, he is sure to become a strong ally someday. I've heard that he also showed overwhelming results in the Bloodline Continuation Ceremony four years ago. Even the Lionheart's direct line was forced to recognize his talent. If he receives a Roth's support on top of that, we might even be able to say that we contributed to the second coming of the Great Vermouth. Ha 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 ha. I can't help but feel that you're far too generous with your compliments. Balzac Ludbeth, are those words truly yours? What do you mean by that? I'm talking about the Demon King of Incarceration, who you've contracted yourself to. I only wanted to know whether his influence is coloring your words. Ha 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 ha. The Demon King of Incarceration is far too busy with Helmuth's affairs. Furthermore, if I was trying to convey the will of the Demon King of Incarceration, I wouldn't have made my argument in such a fashion. I would have pushed even harder and more forcefully. Forcefully? I'm sorry if my words sounded offensive, but the weight that the will of the Demon King has on me is far more absolute than anything else. It doesn't feel like we'll be able to achieve complete unanimity with our differing opinions. So instead, why don't we leave it up to a majority vote? Because the longer our argument goes on, the more bored that kid waiting outside will get. That would be for the better. I am in favor of issuing Eugene Lionheart with a permit to enter Akron. This royal library not only stored several grimoires of immense value, but on the upper floors, it also kept the various vestiges left by those legendary archwizards who had left their names in the history of magic. This was the first floor of Akron, 
the entire history of Aeroth and Akron covered one wall of this wide open hall, and quite a few stories related to Sienna were recorded among the rest of the history. What Eugene found the most interesting was the content about Sienna. Sienna's vestiges were stored on floors 12 to 14. Hey, kid! The White Tower Master's name was Melketh Elhaya. She was the first person in history to have signed a contract with two spirit kings at the same time. Is the discussion over? We held a majority vote. Five people approved your entry, two people opposed it, and one abstained. That was more support than I had expected. Aren't you curious about who approved, who opposed, and who abstained? As long as I know that more people approved than opposed, I'm fine with that. If that's the case, then am I allowed to go to the upper floors now? You're allowed. After all, that is what the majority vote decided. Ha, huh. since it looks like you aren't all that curious, allow me to just tell you, I'm the one who abstained. Oh, but there's no need to worry. Although I may have abstained, I'm not opposed to you entering Akron. I would just get caught up in an annoying argument. You can see it in their faces, right? They all still look upset. Even though the majority vote has already been cast and a conclusion has been reached, they'll just change the location and start arguing once more. The Blue Tower Master approved. At first, he was opposed to it, but he seemed to have changed his mind along the way. Now then, dum dum dum. Who do you think the two opposing parties were? I said that I wasn't curious. It was the Green Tower Master and the head of the Wizards Guild. Why are you still telling me this when I've said that I'm not curious about it? Are you really 17 years old? Your reactions are so boring? You should be like, how dare they ignore the prestige of the Lionheart's direct line? I don't care. I am off then. Wait, I know what that sword is. It's a treasure of the Lionheart clan, the Storm Sword Winnid. I've heard that that sword has even been blessed with the protection of the Wind Spirit King. Yep, so what about it? I've always wanted to sign a contract with the Spirit King of the Wind, but he seems to be such a proud person that no matter how many times I try to summon him, he just won't appear. I've even begged the Lightning Spirit King and the Earth Spirit King, but they've told me that the Wind Spirit King won't sign a contract with anyone. That's why I sent such an earnest letter to the Lionheart's main family, begging to borrow Winnid. They said that the treasures of the main family can never be lent to outsiders. Petty bastards. It's like they think I might take Winnid and go into hiding with it. I just want to use it as a catalyst for a contract. No matter what you tell me, I have no intention of loaning Winnid to you. It's not like I own Winnid. I'm borrowing it with the Patriarch's permission. It's fine. I won't tell anyone. You can just lend it to me for a few moments. It probably won't take that long. Just a day, at the most. If you want, you can even watch as I use it. Only the Wind Spirit King, Tempest, knew the full story of what had happened 300 years ago in the castle of the Demon King of Incarceration. Of course, Tempest had played innocent, claiming that he didn't know anything, but Eugene definitely couldn't believe those words. That son of a bitch, his fat ass must have gotten pretty damn heavy over the years since he won't come out no matter how many times I call him. Eugene had attempted to summon Tempest several times. With the amount of mana he currently has, he still can't summon Tempest. However, Melkith might be able to summon him. Eugene wasn't going to show a positive reaction to Melkith's proposal just yet. Rather than allowing her to simply grab onto the bait, it was better to tease the line a bit to see if he was able to draw in a bigger catch. Where can I get my entry card? If you go over there and ask for one, they'll give it to you. Did you know? The familiars who work here were all left behind by the Arch Wizards, whose names have been written on Akron's wall. This, of course, includes those belonging to the Magic King who founded Aeroth, a few from the Battle Mage who was called the Father of Battle Magic, and familiars which belonged to the Wise Sienna as well. Kid, your reactions really are bland. Don't you have a tremendous amount of interest in Lady Sienna? I saw everything earlier. You were reading the records belonging to Lady Sienna over and over again. On your first day in Aroth, you headed straight to Lady Sienna's mansion for a tour. Why do you know so much about my activities? It seems that you're not too aware of it, kid, but you're actually really famous. Of course, I know I'm famous. You are kind of an asshole, too. Anyways, when are you going to lend me Winnid? I'm not going to lend it to you. Do you see the hole beside the door? If you put your ID card in there, the door will open. You're going up to the 12th floor, right? Yep. See, it seems like you really do like Lady Sienna a whole lot. I don't. You're not going to be waiting here for me, are you? I wanted to come with you, but you might get embarrassed. The shock when you face a glimpse of the truth. <laughs> your first time is the most intense. 
It might be better for you if you wear a diaper. Why? You might just wet your pants a little. Have fun! Welcome to Sienna's Hall. Sienna, are you Sienna? Nope, I am the familiar in charge of managing Sienna's Hall. This is the spirit Melketh talked about. How do you know my name? Are you really a familiar? Didn't you just now register your name with Akron on the first floor? Uh, right. It isn't just me. All the familiars in this place are linked to Akron systems. We know exactly who is entering and exiting Akron at all times. What should I call you? Lady Sienna named me Mer. No way. Did she really name you Mare after the Mare in Merdane? Yes, it's such a glorious name, don't you think? Merdane was Sienna's surname. Having made a familiar in her image, what was she thinking, Eugene thought. Uh, I'm just asking since I don't know much about your kind, but are familiars usually, um, as human-like as you are? I'm special, of course. The one who made me was the wise Sienna, companion of the great Vermouth. I was created with the personality of my master lady Sienna as the basis. Isn't it a taboo of magic to create a living being? But I'm not a living being. I don't have a soul like all living beings have. My body was created through Lady Sienna's magic. And as for my consciousness, it's in there. Eugene stared blankly at the sphere. What on earth is that? That's a great question. That is the distilled essence of all the magic that Lady Sienna developed throughout her life. That is witchcraft. Eugene's jaw couldn't help but drop. This was witchcraft? The grimoire that Sienna was said to have just finished writing before she disappeared and was said to have been divided into three volumes? How does that look anything like a book? It's an outdated prejudice to say that a book should look like a book. That just sounds like nonsense. It's only natural that Sir Eugene doesn't understand it. After all, there's no way that Sir Eugene is capable of understanding Lady Sienna's magic when even the Tower Masters can't comprehend it, right? Mir's words were overflowing with pride, and her mischievous smile was full of confidence. And at the same time, her attitude subtly looked down upon the one facing her. She had said that she was based on Sienna's personality. Right up until she disappeared, was Lady Sienna's character similar to yours? Of course, it's different. The personality I was based on is Lady Sienna's childhood personality. Lady Sienna became much nobler and overflowing with dignity. She didn't laugh much and was solely preoccupied with researching and developing magic. Yeah, nobler my ass. So what did you mean by saying that your consciousness is in there? My consciousness is maintained by witchcraft's magic, and the purpose of my existence is to protect and maintain witchcraft. I have been supervising this hall following the orders that Lady Sienna gave me 200 years ago. When the head wizard had first read the first volume of witchcraft, he had said that all the magic that he learned up to that point in his life now seemed like child's play. Certainly, this is far beyond the realm of ordinary magic. Do you know why Lady Sienna went into seclusion or where she went? Of course, I don't know. Lady Sienna's disappearance was both surprising and secretive. Neither her disciples nor I knew anything about Lady Sienna's retreat into seclusion. The King of Arath, the Tower Masters of that time, the head of the Wizards Guild, and countless other wizards still captured me and asked me for Lady Sienna's whereabouts. I told them that I didn't know anything. However, they didn't believe me. Then men who didn't even know what they were doing and were lacking in skills started trying to access witchcraft and messing with my memories. They seem to have lost their ability to learn from their mistakes since they keep finding me to repeat the same attempts every few decades. If Mare had all of Sienna's memories, there was no way that the Wizards of Aroth would have left her alone. They might have dismantled Mare to extract all her memories of magic, or else they could have used her to research new magic. No matter how much the Wizards respected Sienna, if there had been something like that in front of them, they wouldn't be able to call themselves Wizards if they didn't take it apart to study it. They say only the first volume is displayed at Akron, is that correct? Are the other two volumes stored here as well? Nope, this is the original text of witchcraft, but only the first volume is stored inside there. Lady Sienna extracted the second and third volumes from the original text, and when only the first volume was left, she donated the original text to Akron. Sir Eugene seems to have a lot of interest in Lady Sienna. Isn't that true of everyone who comes here? That may be the case, but Sir Eugene isn't exactly an ordinary wizard, right? The clan left by the Great Vermouth. This is my first time seeing one of his descendants, so it feels a little amazing. From what I can recall after returning to Aroth, she never once interacted with the Lionheart clan. She never even met with Vermouth again. 
According to the records of the Lionheart clan, there was no further interaction after the clan was established. The next time that any of the companions met, was at Vermouth's funeral. This made Eugene feel like there was a strong sense of separation between them, and this filled him with complicated questions. In your memories, were there any times when Lady Sienna talked about her former companions? There were times she would look at Sir Molin and call him an idiot. She called Anise like a snake. What about Hamel? Idiot, son of a bitch, fool, and a piece of shit. Didn't you say earlier that Lady Sienna was much nobler and overflowing with dignity? Even a noble person overflowing with dignity can do something like swearing. Whenever Lady Sienna talked about her former companions, her expressions always seemed like she was about to cry. Especially when she would talk about Hamel, it was extremely distressing for her. Did Lady Sienna have anything to say about Vermouth? She didn't say anything about him. She didn't make any compliments, curses, or even observations about him. The same portrait as the one hanging in Sienna's mansion. That portrait is a forgery. Lady Sienna never once smiled like that. During the frequent talks, Lady Sienna held with me to establish my personality. I asked Lady Sienna why she always seemed so sad. Although Lady Sienna wasn't able to smile like me, she explained to me why she would leave behind a portrait like that. If it was meant to be passed down to future generations, it would be better to see a smiling face rather than a sad face. As for that portrait, the artist just randomly drew a smile. Perhaps that's why Lady Sienna didn't like it very much, although the portrait is currently up for public display in her mansion. It's always nice to see a smiling face, as Lady Sienna said. Eugene unconsciously reached out and patted Mare on the head. Murr immediately knocked away his hand. Don't cross the line. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Although I might have a smaller body than you, I've been here for over 200 years. I don't want to be treated like a kid. Witchcraft wasn't the only item in Sienna's hall. Of the various magical tools that Sienna had used during her lifetime, that staff is the one that Lady Sienna used throughout most of her life. Akasha. As expected, you already knew about the fairy tree, which only grows in Samar Forest, the Sanctuary of the Elves. Akasha, the most powerful magic staff in the world, was made from the roots of that thousand-year-old tree that grows in the center of their forest. The elves believe that the ancient tree holds the spirits of their ancestors and that its roots support the entire world. You know what that means, right? Those elves cut off a root of that ancient and sacred tree to make this staff as a gift for Lady Sienna. Sienna wasn't an elf or even a half-elf. Sienna didn't know who her parents were. When she was just a baby, she was abandoned in Samar Forest. An elf who just so happened to be passing by was drawn to the baby's cries and saved Sienna. After discovering that she had tremendous magical talent, they recognized her as one of their own and taught her the magic of the elves. Not only that, do you see that thing over there? The red jewel at the end of the staff? If you're curious to know what that is, it's... A dragon heart. Yes, that's right. Among all the magic staffs that exist in the world, there are only two staffs that have incorporated a dragon heart. One is Lady Sienna's Akasha, and the other is... Vladimir. The current owner of Vladimir was Count Edmund Codreth of Helmuth. He is one of the three black wizards to have signed a contract with the Demon King of Incarceration. That terrible staff had still been around 300 years ago. At that time, Vladimir's owner was a lich named Belial, a servant of the Demon King of Incarceration. In his previous life, the one who had killed him was that lich, Belial. All the demonic beasts and demon folk who guarded the castle of the Demon King of Incarceration were powerful enough to be a match for any of the previous Demon King's servants. And even among those powerful guardians, there were three especially powerful demon folk. These three were known as Incarceration's Blade, Shield, and Staff. They couldn't conquer the castle of the Demon King of Incarceration without anyone dying. So if someone had to die for it, let that person be me, he had insisted. And once the battle with Belial, Incarceration's Staff, was over, a large hole had been pierced through Hamel's chest. That was how his previous life had ended. Can I try holding it? Of course it's okay, but just so you know, it's impossible for you to cast any magic with that staff. Akasha will only recognize Lady Sienna as its master. Several wizards tried to become Akasha's new owner, but none of them were able to receive Akasha's approval. Akasha wouldn't accept the mana that he had offered it. Since he'd seen the illusion of Sienna, Eugene had held a slight hope that he might be able to obtain Akasha's approval, but it seemed that Sienna had left no such arrangements for him. If you were going to leave something behind for me, I'd rather you'd have left Akasha instead of my necklace. It looks like Sir Eugene does like Lady Sienna a whole lot. You can't really call it liking her. Liar. Every time I tell a story about Lady Sienna, your eyes twinkle brightly, and whenever you see something that belonged to Lady Sienna, you become extremely immersed in its history. I've always had a liking for old stories. Is that so? Then you should like that book as well.
The Great Adventures of the Hero Vermouth. Since Lady Sienna and her other companions were always reluctant to talk about what happened in Helmuth, this fairy tale is the first book to tell the world about the It's a damned book is what it is. Huh? Why? I like Sir Hamel the most, and I respect and admire him, but in that fairy tale, Sir Hamel is made out to look like such an idiot. This book is the first edition. It's different from the revised version that is spread throughout the world right now. You might not be aware of this, Sir Eugene, but this fairy tale was first published in Aeroth 300 years ago. But the author of this book is anonymous. Let me have a look. Hamel that asshole fought so excitedly with Vermouth upon their first meeting, he couldn't even touch Vermouth's collar, and his face was thrown into the ground so hard that he cried. This son of a bitch. Could the bastard who wrote this have been a niece? For now, why don't we go up to the 14th floor? You would probably prefer that floor to this one. Why so? Because you said that you like old stories, right? And that you like stupid Hamel as well. Take a look. Those are the personal memories that Lady Sienna extracted for her recollections. Those aren't just simply portraits, but are the real versions of Lady Sienna's comrades as she remembered them. Over there, the handsome man standing in the center is the great Vermouth. Beside him, the blonde woman whose eyes are smiling so much that it's impossible to see her pupils. That's faithful Anise. The saintess who carried around bottles of wine while calling them holy water. The macho causing you confusion about whether he's a troll or a human is the brave Molin. The man who looks like he has a bad personality with a frown on his face is stupid Hamel. This is the only sole record of Hamel's appearance. You can only find his face here, in Lady Sienna's hall. How handsome. Right? I still can't get over how handsome Sir Vermouth was. I was saying that Hamel was so handsome, not my ancestor. Are you crazy? Well, my ancestor, um, I admit that he's handsome. But Hamel also, uh, he has his charms with his, um, bestial charm. <laughs> What's on the higher floors? Books written during the process of constructing Akron. If you were to read it as you are now, Sir Eugene, you probably wouldn't be able to understand it. That goes for her other research journals stored in Akron as well. Among all the wizards who've found their way here, none of them were able to understand what Lady Sienna's research was. Witchcraft contains an optimized mana application formula. It can amplify the magical power created by a circle, increasing efficiency, and removing the need for incantations. Sorry, but while I hear what you're saying, I don't understand it. Of course that's the case. If you could understand it just by hearing it, there wouldn't be any reason for witchcraft to be called the greatest grimoire in the history of magic, would there? Okay then, and just how am I supposed to read it? Close your eyes and reach out your hand. After that, transmit your mana into witchcraft and you'll be able to read it. Suddenly, he lost all sensation in his body. He couldn't hear anything, and he couldn't smell anything. It's similar to a dream, but also different. Things weren't changing according to his will, like in a lucid dream. Instead, he just felt an overwhelming sense of powerlessness. Since his body did not exist, he couldn't move anything. Witchcraft had flooded his head, creating an infinite A huge wave formed in front of Eugene, only to become a single ring. The single circle began rotating slowly, copying it. Through this, the circle multiplied one at a time, his consciousness began to collapse. When Eugene opened his eyes, the very first thing he did was check his underwear. He was worried that he might have wet himself, just like Melkith had warned. Did I do something shameful while I was out? Well, it was a bit shameful for you to faint like that. Were you worried that you might have peed your pants? It's normal. There have been quite a lot. The current White Tower Master, Melkith Elhaya, also peed herself, and so did the Blue Tower Master, so, how was it? Difficult. I think I can vaguely understand what I saw. However, I'm finding it difficult to accept it as the truth, or as even just a theory. That circle, it just kept multiplying. But the circles I know, they only go up to the ninth circle. When Lady Sienna first created the circle magic formula, she was already at the ninth circle. However, Lady Sienna continued to focus on researching and training her magic. And just like that, she surpassed the limits that she had set herself. It's called the Eternal Whole, the ultimate end goal of the circle magic formula that only Lady Sienna has been able to reach. Since witchcraft was released, numerous wizards have attempted to recreate the Eternal Whole, but none have managed to break through the wall into the ninth circle. Without wasting even a single point of your mana, you need to contain all your mana within a giant series of circles, then split them apart and recombine them to form a new one. Although she didn't confirm it personally, she could probably have slain a demon king all on her own. Maybe. Eugene's basic understanding couldn't fully comprehend the greatness of witchcraft. Sienna wasn't just wasting her time frivolously. Ennis and Mullen had probably done the same, except for one. Vermouth, 
So for those guys to have not gone to challenge the Demon Kings once more until the very end, and for Sienna and Anise to have gone into hiding at around the same time. Vermouth, just what on earth were you planning? You sure were late to come back down. So how was it? I'm not sure what I saw. Based on the magic theory that I've learned so far, I think it will take me several years just to properly understand a single one of those magic books. Of course, because the magic books stored here are the distillation of Aroth's hundreds of years of magic, kid. No matter how smart you might be, there's a limit to the amount of magic you can learn without a proper teacher. You don't need to worry. As long as you lend me Winnid for a teensy bit, I'll explain ten volumes of magic texts to you in a way that's easy for you to understand. Doesn't that sound like a good deal? It does sound good, but I don't necessarily need to trade for guidance on those magic books. Don't you have anything else that's worth trading for? Items can work just as well. This kid really knows how to cut a deal. You don't have a staff yet, right? Although you might feel like you can already use magic quite well even without a staff, that's just because all the magic you've learned so far has been simple. Eugene, I have a lot of fine staffs in my collection as well. Why do you have to keep trying to get in my way? Why do you have to keep being so greedy when you already have contracts with two spirit kings? This old man, do you think that I don't know what you're really afraid of? Are you truly that worried that I might wreak havoc after signing a contract with the wind spirit king? So you're well aware then. Hey, even though we've known each other for decades, do you still not know me that well? Can't you see that I've got no interest in the headache that's meddling in Aroth's state of affairs? Although you can say that now, once you obtain too much power, it might end up twisting you. I swear on my mana that I have no desire to abuse my power and make a mess. Even if I do manage to sign a contract with the Wind Spirit King, I won't do anything that disgraces my position as the White Tower Master. All right then. What? If you've sworn on your mana, then I guess I'll just have to trust you. Isn't that right? You snake tricked me. I've been thinking about it, but I don't want a staff. If anyone heard you say that, they'd think I was just giving it to you. Kid, I'm just lending it to you. You got that! Right. Allow me to say this in advance, but I will only be able to lend Winnid to you for a few days, but if that means I will only be able to borrow one of the artifacts that Head Wizard Melketh owns for a few days at most, then we might as well not go through with it. You, just as I thought, you are an annoying brat. Let's trade one year per day. So if I lend you Winnied for a week, you'll let me borrow whatever it is for seven years? That's right. Do you really have to go that far just because you want to borrow Winnied? I have to make a contract with the Wind Spirit King, no matter what. Ever since I became a spirit summoner, all I've ever wanted was to sign a contract with the Wind Spirit King. Because the Great Vermouth was the last one to have made a contract with the Wind Spirit King. Ahem, Eugene. If you don't have any desire for a staff, then... Hey you! Just keep quiet! Among the artifacts collected by the White Tower Master, there's one that's extremely rare and precious. I told you to shut up! I'm quite curious about what he has to say. Well, there's this artifact called the Cloak of Darkness. I said shut up! Why do you sound so upset? When, as far as I know, you haven't even used the Cloak of Darkness once in these last 10 years? You! Do you know how much I went through to get my hands on that cloak? Isn't it better to lend it to someone who needs it and get what you want in return instead of just leaving it lying around and used except for decoration purposes? What exactly is the Cloak of Darkness? It's just a winter cloak. Since it's got fur all over it, it's quite warm. But that's all there is to it. You know about Geddon's shield stored in the Lionheart treasure vault, right? Although it's not really on the same level, the cloak can do something similar. If you direct a frontal attack into the inside of the cloak, you can redirect it back in any direction you want. If you don't calculate the spatial coordinates correctly and guide the path of the attack with mana, you won't be able to send the attack back in the direction you want it to go. The outer surface of the cloak is also enchanted with high-level defensive spells. You can easily block an offensive spell of the fifth circle just by wearing it. But that also depends on your own mana. That cloak also has the highest levels of subspace magic imbued into it. Just put some things into the cloak, and then you can take them out whenever you need them. E you bastard. That sounds great. Let's trade for the Cloak of Darkness instead of a staff. Ah, uh, but not right now. I still need to request permission from the main family. I, I still haven't agreed to this. If you don't want to, then it can't be helped. Anyways, I used too much brain power upstairs, so now I'm starving. Head Wizard Lobarian, if it's okay with you, would you like to have a meal together? That sounds good to me. Although it isn't that close to here, 
I know of a nice restaurant situated up in the sky, in one of the floating stations. Although the food there is delicious, the night view seen from its windows is even better than the food. Wow, come to think of it, I still haven't gotten to see the night view that's called one of a Roth's crown jewels. If so, then that's great. Allow me to call an aerial carriage for us immediately. Fine, I get it. Melkith reluctantly admitted defeat. Oh, you were still here? The Cloak of Darkness? If that's what you want, I'll... I'll lend it to you. There's no need to rush. Haven't I already told you that I need to ask permission from the main family? <coughs> I could almost think that you were a crow screaming. Just as Eugene had expected, Geely had made no objections to loaning Winnid. However, he did attach conditions. They absolutely could not risk destroying Winnid during that time, and an observer from the Lionheart clan would be attached to Melkith for the duration she was borrowing Winnid. Is that the Cloak of Darkness? Cool, isn't it? I think it would look cooler if I wore it. I've always felt like you were an annoying brat, but this is... Don't get too upset. Wouldn't it be better to be happy that I agreed to this deal? So then, who will be arriving? They said that Keon, the Patriarch's younger brother, and the Lionheart clan's guardians will also be accompanying him. This will be the first time loaning out a treasure of the main family, and they're also here to take a look at Iodes, my older brother's incident. The Guardians? You're talking about the hunting dogs of the Lionheart clan, right? Calling them hunting dogs. Although the Guardians wouldn't appreciate these words, Eugene's opinion of them wasn't all that different from Melkith's. The Guardians of the Family Commandments, the Lionheart clan's Black Lions. Although that's what they were called, the Guardians' role was no different from that of hunting dogs. If a child from the collateral lines who had not attended a bloodline continuation ceremony were to train their mana or pick up a real sword, or if the white flame formula, which was meant to be learned exclusively by the main family, was taught to a collateral descendant, the guardians would appear to deliver the judgment for their crimes. The practice of black magic was strictly forbidden by the Lionheart clan's commandments. Although Iod hadn't succeeded in practicing black magic, it was true that he had tried to start learning black magic. As such, the Guardians had decided to visit Aroth to investigate this matter closely. Keon Lionheart, the still unmarried younger brother of the Patriarch, became a member of the Lionheart clan's Black Lions. Even the Patriarch isn't on the same level of as the old bastards of the Senate. Eugene have never seen them before. He wondered how strong they were. A gigantic aerial carriage landed in front of the Red Tower of Magic. They sure are throwing their weight around. Didn't you say that you respect Sir Vermouth, the ancestor of the Lionheart clan? Kid, don't misquote me. The one I respect is the great Vermouth, not the founder of the Lionheart clan. I don't like how its main family suppresses its collateral lines, nor how their council and their Knights of the Black Lion put on such a secretive act. But for now, you should hide such an attitude. If you really want to borrow Wynayad, you had better avoid doing anything that might offend them. Are you asking me to act all nice and polite? If anyone had heard you say that, they might be confused into thinking that I'm not trading with them on an equal footing. I, with my greatly cherished and adored Cloak of Darkness, I'm actually trading it for Winnie. It's not really a trade. We're just loaning them to each other. And you remember that we promised a day for a year, right? The door of the aerial carriage finally opened. For such a spacious carriage, only five people were riding in it. And the first person to get off was... Ciel, what are you doing here? My mother's birthday is coming soon. I've come to pick out a few presents for her. I was also curious to see if you were doing well. Following Ciel, Keon was the next to emerge. Eugene, how are you? It really hasn't been long enough since you two last saw each other to feel such joy at your reunion. There'll be enough time for that later, so let's just focus on business for now. Although he didn't know who the man was, Eugene could feel he had exceptional skills, but not with a sword. It looks like he uses a spear, Eugene observed. That man's a wizard. Since they were coming here to check on both Winnid's loan and Iowa's issue, it was only natural for them to have included a wizard in their group. And behind him. Oh my, she's strong. But what Eugene noticed before all that was the woman's hands, due to the long period that had been spent training them as weapons. So she doesn't use a sword or a spear. She's a fist fighter. Considering her outfit, she must be the leader. Has it been 20 years? Since you became the current Red Tower Master, right? When we last met, I had already told you I would soon become the next Red Tower Master. Did you really? Since so much time has passed, I can't clearly recall it. And I probably wasn't all that interested in the first place. So you're Eugene Lionheart. Yes, ma'am. My name is Carmen Lionheart. You could consider me your great aunt, but don't call me that. Got it? Um, huh. That would mean that this woman was Gilead's aunt. Appearance really isn't everything. 
Among those here, Melkith alone was over 60 years old, and Liberian was the closest to her age. But even so, these two were able to maintain unbelievably youthful looks at their respective ages, so it was no surprise for Carmen to look so young. The wind is picking up, so why don't we head inside and talk? Carmen Lionheart, like Keon, was the younger sibling of a previous generation's patriarch, and again, she hadn't gotten married. After staying at the main estate for quite some time, she transferred to the Knights of the Black Lion. Currently, she is the captain of the third division of the Knights of the Black Lion. Nishon Lionheart was the man who patted Keon on the shoulder. He was one of the commanders in the third division led by Carmen, and instead of the direct line, he came from one of the collateral lines. Falgo Lionheart was the wizard. He likewise belonged to the third division. He was from a magic-focused branch, which was rare even among the collateral lines, and today he was the one in charge of formalizing the deal with Melkith. This deal involves the Storm Sword Wineyad, which belongs to the Lionheart's main family, and the Cloak of Darkness, which belongs to the White Tower Master. For every day that Wineyad is borrowed, the Cloak of Darkness will be loaned out for one year, correct? Yes. We've already prepared a contract. What was emphasized in bolded characters was that Melkith was not allowed to risk destroying Wynnid. If that occurs, you must pay the corresponding price. Isn't that rather vague wording? Just in case, I would like to hear what would happen if I did destroy Winnied. Then you would have to pay for it with your life. The Storm Sword. Winnied is a treasure of priceless value. If you want to borrow it, then of course, you should be prepared to risk your life. Even though my life also has incalculable value? Although that might be the case for Aroth, that doesn't apply to the Lionheart clan. Now, now, there's really no need to offer up your life. I have faith in the White Tower Master. I also have respect for you as a fellow wizard. I don't truly believe that the White Tower Master will make such a clumsy mistake of destroying the Catalyst while trying to make a contract with the Spirit. In any case, should Wineyad be destroyed, we will discuss the matter again at that time. But what you're saying is that it will still be up to the Lionheart clan to decide first, right? If you don't like it, then give up on borrowing Winnied. The truth is, no one on the Lionheart side is desperate to make this deal. If the Patriarch hadn't personally requested it, I wouldn't even have come here. Hmm. If someone heard you say that, they'd think you came all the way here because of me. Of course, I've come here for the truly important issue, not this trivial matter. I've made an appointment to visit the Black Tower of Magic in an hour from now. I need to have a conversation with Balzac Ludbeth about the incident with Iode. And after that, I will be accompanying him to Aroth's prison to interrogate the Black Wizard who dared to teach Black Magic to the eldest son of the Lionheart clan. These words were the complete opposite of Gilead's previous response. Gilead had said that he would allow Aratha's laws to hold precedence in judging Gavid's case. That seems to be a bit different from what Gilead had decided. Although the Patriarch may have made his decision, the Council has reached a different decision. The name of the Lionheart clan was dirtied due to the previous incident. The person who caused such filth to tarnish our name needs to be held accountable. To think she was carrying a pocket watch. It was the first time he had seen someone carrying such an uncomfortable and heavy watch in their vest pocket. If you're going to go around carrying a pocket watch, why are you also wearing a wristwatch? Also, why do you keep chewing on a cigar you haven't even lit? I have already obtained permission from Aeroth's royal family and parliament. Rather than tearing at each other's faces over this issue, wouldn't it be a lot cleaner to allow us to interrogate and punish him? She dodged my question. Eugene didn't know how much money the Lionheart clan must have paid for the right to interrogate and punish the criminal, but the council must have paid a large enough bribe that no one had sought to refuse. As such, what are you going to do? Are you going to take the deal? I don't have much time, so answer quickly. So they want to go by hours instead of days. That works out better for me since three hours should already be enough to be able to get her Cloak of Darkness back within two months. I'll take it. Its design is impressive. I especially like the thick fur around the collar. It reminds me of the symbol of our Lionheart clan, the Lion's Mane. But it's a shame that the fur is colored black. If the fur was dyed white like the flames of the White Flame formula, or if it was dyed gray, it would look much more impressive. The current fur color seems to suit someone from the Knights of the Black Lion much better. Hand it over. Didn't you hear her say she wants to try it on? But I don't think she said something like that. She doesn't necessarily have to put it into words for you to get what she meant. Please try it on. It's not bad. I think it would be even better if you used a lion-shaped brooch to clasp it across your chest. You could also have the lion heart sigil embroidered on the back. 
From the way you're talking, it's like I'm giving it to you. Don't get the wrong idea. I'm only lending it to you. Remember, don't mess around with my cloak. It's about time. Let's go. See you? Yes, I'll make sure to wait with Eugene. Did you say you've come here to pick something out for Lady Ancilla's birthday? Seal started opening up various conversations with Eugene, who just kept listing with no reply. Let's stop with the useless talk and go pick out a present for your mother. But I don't even know what Lady Ancilla likes. But I do, so why should that matter? You just need to follow me. If you're just gonna have me follow you, why ask me to act as your guide? You really do lack any courtesy. Then, do you want me to just wander around all on my own? You're going to abandon me in the capital of a foreign country, which I've never been to in my life, a place I know nothing about? What do you mean by abandon? After all, it's not like you can't take care of yourself. Even if you say that, everyone knows you're supposed to be following me. Then I guess it can't be helped. I'm sure that if I needlessly blow you off, I'll be hearing about this for ages. Did you do anything for your birthday? How about a party? I didn't do anything. I was just reading books. Books? You really didn't have a party? And you didn't get any presents from anyone? I didn't get any. Although Head Wizard Lobarian and Miss Hera offered to get me some, I begged them not to because I would feel embarrassed. Who's Hera? A wizard of the Red Tower of Magic. A woman? Her name is Hera. So, did you really think she would be a man? But you, did you really come all the way to Aeroth just to buy presents? Didn't I say I was here to see you as well? But apart from that, I've known you for four years. Did you really think that I couldn't read your reactions? It's not like it's some huge secret. So what do you want to do with Lady Carmen? You really do notice the strangest things. You're just too obvious. I'm in the middle of requesting her to take me as her squire, since, in any case, my brother is going to become the patriarch, and I have no desire for the position myself, although it seems like mother wants me to enter an arranged marriage." Seal peeked at Eugene's expression. However, Eugene's face didn't show any changes. I hate the idea of arranged marriages, but I don't want to be locked up in the main estate either and forced to act like a lady. So that's why you want to join the Knights of the Black Lion? Although I cannot join right now, I want to become Lady Carmen's squire and receive her guidance. That's good. What is? It's good to see you looking for something you can do yourself, rather than just relying on the main family. How's Cyan doing? He keeps talking about you. He wanted me to find out what star of the White Flame formula you've reached. The third star. It's still the same as before. He's also still on the second star. Only IOD had grown up to be a dog. I heard that he's gone back to his mother's relative's house. I still want him to learn magic, even though they should just let him do what he likes, since he won't be able to become the patriarch anyway. Let's stop discussing such upsetting topics and get something to eat. Isn't there a good restaurant nearby? There are a lot of restaurants, but their food probably tastes worse than the main estate's cooking. The taste doesn't matter. When it comes to good food, it isn't just taste, but the atmosphere is also important. Eugene was dragged along by his arm. He's dead now. After all that torture, he didn't say anything. I guess he really didn't know. It's strange. How could a low-level black wizard like that come into contact with the eldest son of the Lionheart's main family and arrange a contract for him? Either he didn't know what fear was, or he could just be crazy. He was probably just desperate. He first started practicing black magic dozens of years ago, but had found little success. If he grew old and died just like that, his soul would become the property of the demon folk he was contracted to, and he wouldn't even be allowed to reincarnate. As such, he probably believed that he could get out of trouble with the strength that he would have gained for selling the Lionheart clan's eldest heir. I've heard that Noir Giabella claims she wasn't involved in this. What do you think, Balzac Ludbeth? Why the target of your questions always comes back to me, especially since I believe I have cooperated with you at every step in this affair, and I've shown you more than enough apologies and respect. Rather than believe that such an insignificant black wizard could be behind this plot, it would make more sense to suspect that you're the one who masterminded it. If I was the one to have planned this, I would have covered my tracks. I would have made sure no one traced this incident back to me. Sir Carmen, I happen to have a lot of enemies. I serve the Demon King of Incarceration, and I am grateful to him for placing a lot of trust and love in me. But thanks to that, a lot of demon folk who dislike me, in my opinion, one of them may have done this to put me in this difficult situation. But you don't have any evidence of that. There's also no evidence of me being responsible for this incident. Really now, how many times over the past few days have I said that I had nothing to do with it? By the way, Lady Carmen, surely I'm not the only one in a difficult situation because of this, right? You're free to say out whatever you've got brewing in that head of yours. 
However, are you willing to take responsibility for your words? As a faithful servant of the Demon Lord of Incarceration, just as he wishes to get along with the Lionheart clan, so do I. That is why I bowed my head in apology, cooperated with your investigation, and showed you my respect. However, I am only human, so I can't fully suppress this feeling of injustice piercing deep into my chest. In the face of such excessive insults, even if it's for the sake of the Demon Lord of Incarceration and myself, I won't be able to show such inexhaustible consideration anymore. Naishan and Jian stepped forward to block the front of the cell. I have no desire to cause even more discourtesy as a visitor to this foreign kingdom. If that is what you desire, I'll take care of things so no one even notices. But to do that, your neck must first remain attached to the rest of your body. But it's worth considering that someone from the Lionheart clan wishes to harm the prestige of the main family. We couldn't find out anything with torture or with mind magic. It was all too clean. That's why I suspected you. Balzac remembered saying he would cover his tracks. Oh my, then it looks like I went too far with my words. What about the incubus that tried to form the contract with Iode? I can show it to you, but it isn't an enjoyable sight. I've already seen a lot of cruel and disgusting things. There is even one right in front of me now. If you insist. The soul was harvested by the Demon King of Incarceration. If you like, I can also request that it be offered to you. There's no need for that. Let's head back. I'm warning you this just in case. If you ever contact Eugene Lionheart- The only one who can command my actions and desires is the Demon King of Incarceration. Lady Carmen, you have no power over me. Gion, what do you think the truth is? I suspect Amelia Merwin. She's someone who envies and wants to keep Balzac Ludbeth in check. If Amelia did this, wouldn't that mean that Nahama is behind it too? Lately, Nahama's movements have been suspicious. Sultan Alibur is a young piglet with a lot of ambition. He'll probably declare war within the next few years. A war with Kiel? They'll probably hit Taurus first. The Kiel Empire shared a border with Nahama. The relationship between the two countries wasn't hostile, but Nahama frequently quarreled with its western neighbor, the Kingdom of Taurus. If Nahama attacks Taurus, Kiel will also need to prepare for war. Of course, as part of these preparations, the Lionheart clan will also be called up. So preempting that, Amelia made the first move to create division within the Lionheart clan. Is that what you think? In any case, like what the late Gavid confessed, it might just be a crime of impulse without any conspiracy behind it. However, we can't be sure of that. That's why we need to be suspicious. Gion, hypothetically, what would have happened if we hadn't overlooked Balzac's provocation back there? If we had to fight him, apart from you, the rest of us would have died in there. You're being too modest. I'm not that good at fighting with wizards. I am the one who's not confident. That's why I didn't get into a fight. Iode will be placed under surveillance. We have already dispatched one of our black lions to Tanis' relatives. Since he's the eldest son of the main family, Iode will not be executed, but there will be no next time. Iode will live under surveillance for the rest of his life, and of course, his right of succession will be stripped from him. We've heard that Tanis is looking for a tutor to teach her son magic. We will allow this to happen, because if a mastermind is truly behind this incident, they may attempt to re-establish contact with IOD. IOD used to love magic so much as a kid. Why on earth would he turn to black magic? Understood. All right then, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. See you all later. Eugene, what do you think about joining the Knights of the Black Lion? Huh? They say that you have great talents. If you have no interest in becoming the Patriarch, the position of the Second Division Captain Squire is vacant. If you want, I can recommend you immediately. Thank you for the offer, but no, I hope you have a safe journey. What a shame. Has there been any word from the White Tower Master? No. If she had successfully managed to sign a contract, she would have come here right away to brag. But seeing that there is no news, she must be struggling. O oh, great king of wind spirit, master of storms, I Melkith ask you to form a contract with me. Even though she conveyed her message to the spirit world, there was no response from Tempest. Contract! She finally heard a voice, but Melkith didn't feel any joy upon hearing it. Levin, the spirit king of lightning, I called Tempest. So why are you the one appearing? Tempest asked me to tell you to shut up. Tempest just doesn't want to make a contract with you. So you are listening, Tempest. I am the greatest spirit summoner in all of history. I am the only spirit summoner in the world who can make a contract with you. So appear in front of me. I can give you whatever you desire. Contractor, please have some shame. 
I said, get out here. Ah! Contracty, you cannot give Tempest what he wants. The storm wishes to go northward, to defeat the devildom in the north that no one has been able to conquer, to deal with the regrets that have yet to be forgotten after hundreds of years. How could a person age so much in just 10 days? So, the contract? Why even ask when you can clearly tell, you <coughs> fucking tard? There is no need to curse. That son of a bitch <coughs> tempest. Miss Peter Pants, this is a place where you're supposed to keep quiet. No! Ah, so loud. So you weren't able to sign a contract with Tempest? Why would I lie? As long as you borrow it for the rest of the day, that would be a full ten years. If you return Winnie to me now, I'll round it down to nine years for you. N nine years? Take good care of it. Goodbye. The chieftain of the giants, Kamash, was ridiculously huge, a giant that was hundreds of years old and the most powerful chieftain in all of the giants' history. A thousand men were gathered to face hundreds of giants. The truth was that the number of allies didn't really matter, because Vermouth was there. The knights introduced themselves as the Knights of Rose or some bullshit like that. They continued to spout off the names of knightly orders that no one would ever even care about. Let us fight together. What did they mean by fighting together? It would be difficult for them to cut off one of Kamash's toes, even if they all charged together. What they wanted was to have their names added to Vermouth's legend, so their reputation could be passed down to future generations. He very well knew that if he fought alongside these knights, they would only drag him down uselessly and serve as meat shields at most. There was only one man who was able to fight alongside that inhuman monster, and he was the only one Vermouth could rely on this battlefield. Hamel. Yeah, the left arm. Can you do it? I'd prefer the right arm. Isn't that bastard, Kamash? Right-handed? If that's the case, you can take the right arm. Only, the Holy Sword was able to put an end to Kamash, who was protected by the power of the Demon Kings. The Demon King's blessing had faded with Kamash's death, so the beautiful Sienna's beautiful magic was able to exert its full force. Was this written by Lady Sienna? Don't say something so crazy. Why would Lady Sienna write such a story? I noticed a lot of praising for her, calling her beautiful, cute, and adorable. Don't insult Lady Sienna like that. Unless they're insane, who would attach such words in front of their name in a story that they had handwritten themselves? Even if it's you, Sir Eugene, I won't forgive you if you insult Lady Sienna. Are you going to have another go? Yes. While I don't think it's bad to give it another attempt, it seems a little arrogant to attempt it at your level, Sir Eugene. The challenge needs to be difficult to be worthwhile. You keep failing, so how is it worthwhile? It was impossible for the current Eugene to fully reproduce the Eternal Hole. He needed to at least reach the Ninth Circle to replicate it. The Eternal Hole. It was just a matter of holding an infinitely multiplying amount of circles inside one huge circle. By continuously reproducing, entwining, and collapsing, the circles created through this, it amplified any mana put into it. In his past life, Hamel had learned was the cheap mana training scripture that was widely spread among mercenaries. Sienna had even gone through and corrected it. The mana formed in this core in a chain of explosions. By exploding all of his mana, Hamel could bring his full force to bear for a single second. With just that alone, Hamel was able to slash Kamash's limbs. You were born with an instinct for battle. You actually paid money for this mana training scripture? Eugene saw the infinite sea of mana being used to draw a circle. This was the eternal hole, the ultimate endpoint of the circle magic created by Sienna. Eugene didn't doubt himself. He saw that his idea had some possibility of success, just like that. Two years passed. This was the summer of Eugene's 19th year. Isn't it almost time for you to get something to eat? I am a bit hungry, but if I go now, I'll lose my focus. Aren't you being too hasty? You should write it calmly and slowly so that you don't make any small mistakes. I'm not rushing it, and I am writing calmly. I've been revising my thesis constantly, and at least in my eyes, I've yet to see any mistakes. Wizards take several decades to complete a thesis that summarizes their magic. The amount of time I've spent learning magic is less than a decade. That's even more reason to think that you are being overly arrogant by writing your thesis so early. Instead of doing something so rash, you should just immerse yourself in magic for the next 10 years. It looks like our little mare is feeling shy. Haven't I told you not to cross the line? I am 200 years older than you. Then it looks like our little granny mare is pretty shy. Wanna die? Do you hate that I'm leaving? To think that it's already been two years since I first came here. Though it seems I'm the only one who regularly comes and goes from this floor. It's unavoidable, because the other wizards have already finished examining witchcraft long ago. For them, witchcraft was an amazing piece of magic that their predecessor had left behind. 
These wizards would take their time to try to understand and explore the contents of witchcraft, but they would eventually realize it, that this truth wasn't something that they could grasp just yet. In the end, they would seek to complete their unique magic formula through independent research. But Eugene was unique. He had set his sights far too high and was able to comprehend witchcraft. Are you really leaving a Roth once you complete this thesis? If I have to be honest, I don't want you to leave a Roth. If I didn't leave, what would I be doing here? You can do whatever you like. I don't know when the Red Tower Master might be retiring. The current Red Tower Master would probably approve you as his successor without hesitation. And how about the court wizards? Isn't Trempel Vizardo also extremely interested in recruiting you? He is such a noisy person. I hate him. Crown Prince Honin also greatly favors you if you work for him. You will be able to continue to proudly make a name for yourself over the next few decades. That also doesn't appeal to me. You won't be able to become the Patriarch anyway, so why do you have to return to the Lionheart clan? Do I need a reason just to go home? That thesis, do you really have no intention of publishing it? I don't. This thesis is just for my self-satisfaction. In any case, other than me, no one else would truly be able to make use of it. So I'm just using it to tidy up the details of my magic formula by writing it all down. This meant that Eugene didn't need to write a perfect thesis. This ring flame formula can't be reproduced by any other wizard. Regardless of how advanced their understanding of magic is, it would be physically impossible for them to replicate it. It's also not something that can be reproduced by the white flame formula users of the Lionheart's main family. I've also attempted to reproduce your results by following your thesis. I was stalled right from the beginning because I haven't formed a core, nor have I learned the white flame formula. So I tried to use my circles as a replacement, but I wasn't able to replicate your results, Eugene. Instead, my mana seemed to flow backward. Eugene is currently at the fourth star of the white flame formula, and as Hamill had done in his past life, he would ignite his mana to set off a chain of explosions. The exploding mana would then be refined into countless circles, that would then be intertwined with each other to create more circles. This was the circle flame formula. He had become Loberian's disciple. Loberian had provided his helpful critique as Eugenia began to write his thesis. Are you upset? Why would I be upset? Because I said I'd be leaving even though you asked me to stay. I'm not upset. What right do I have to stop you from leaving? Although I've never thought about wanting to go somewhere, even if I did, I'm just a familiar who can't leave Akron. You can just leave me here all alone in this boring, dull, and quiet place while you go off by yourself. I'm not at all disappointed about parting ways with you, with whom I've been playing for these past two years. After all, I'm not really a living human being, and I know full well that humans are just selfish creatures. Is that so? Of course, I'm 200 years older than you, so I am used to goodbyes. Even so, Sir Eugene, please at least come and see me before you leave. Don't just leave without saying anything like Lady Sienna did. All right. Even though I've poured my heart out to you, you're still as calm as ever. You really are a piece of shit. Why am I a piece of shit? Because that's what I think. It doesn't matter if there's a reason or not. You, Sir Eugene, are simply trash. I hate you. You are just a kid but haven't shown me any respect as your elder. Of course, if you were to be truly persuaded by my words and chose not to leave a Roth, then I'm sure I would feel extremely distressed because of that. But I can't help it. As my personality is based on Lady Sienna's childhood, my emotions and behavior can't help but be influenced by a childish temper. Yeah, I can see it clearly. I say such childish things and show a child's stubbornness. That's why I still feel like an idiot for uttering such stupid words. Because I'm sure that Lady Sienna wouldn't act like this. I feel like my actions are an insult to Lady Sienna. Hmm, maybe. The real Lady Sienna might have acted just like you. Please don't say something so nonsensical. There's no way that Lady Sienna would do that. No, I am certain she would have. Could you really be saying that while thinking of Lady Sienna as she's depicted in the fairy tale that someone wrote while using their imagination? I knew Lady Sienna wasn't that kind of person. My thesis should be finished soon. I'll probably be able to finish it before the end of summer. So what about it? I'll come looking for you before I leave. There is something I need to say to you then. What is it? Are you trying to make fun of me? I really will kill you. I'll tell you at that time. So you're finally out. What is it now? This was Trempel Vizardo. As the commander of Aroth's court wizards, he had shown himself to be extremely interested in Eugene. The important position in the court wizards is still empty and I was hoping you would have changed your mind. Thanks, but no thanks. Ahem, Sir Eugene. 
Well, is your thesis going smoothly? I'm fully aware that your teacher, the Red Tower Master, is already in charge of your review. But isn't the Red Tower of Magic specialized in summoning magic? Not only am I good at summoning magic, but I'm also capable in battle magic. After all, it's not like I'm the commander of the court wizards for nothing. It's not like you know what kind of thesis I've been preparing. That's because the only one you've shown it to is the Red Tower Master, who himself done a great job at hiding it. Ah, uh, I can find out just by reading it, right? I'm just as keen on the guidance of juniors as any of the Tower Masters. I'm grateful for your offer, but if I accept your offer, I'm afraid that I will be committing great disrespect to my teacher, Master Liberian. Let's just do this. You and me, why don't we just keep it a secret between us? You won't have to feel any stress from confronting your master, and the Red Tower Master won't lose any face either. As for me, I'm just happy to be contributing to your research. Please excuse me. Tremple silently cursed to himself, darn it, fucking hell. If he found out the truth about my progress with the Eternal Hole, he might even try to crawl through my bedroom window. The only ones who knew that Eugene had managed to replicate the Eternal Hole with the White Flame formula were Loberian and Mare. The other wizards wouldn't be able to find the truth just from looking at him. This had several advantages for Eugene, as this meant that Eugene could completely hide his progress in magic from higher level wizards. Looking at how much power your spells hold, they are beyond the fifth circle. I'm still limited to the fourth circle, anything more than that, and the spells won't come out of the eternal hole, is my understanding of them still not sufficient? That shouldn't be the case, Eugene. It's likely just a matter of limited capacity, because your circle flame formula isn't a perfect replication of the eternal hole after all. As you've reached the fourth star of the white flame formula, you now have four cores. It appears that it would be accurate to assume that the number of cores is equal to your progress in circles. This means that every time you reach another level in the white flame formula, your eternal hole. No, the circle flame formula will also become stronger. But don't let your guard down. Although technique doesn't have any downsides, some dangers might arise when your level increases. I've said this a few times before, but there should be no problems with spells from the fifth circle, but don't try to use magic from the sixth circle, as your body might not handle it. Yes, I am well aware of that. After you finalize your thesis, if you aren't heading back to the main estate right away, where are you planning to go? Ice crabs are said to be a specialty of the Luhar Kingdom. I've wanted to try some ever since I was little. Do you really need to go all the way to the Luhar Kingdom for that? There are currently a lot of shops selling ice crabs on the streets of Arath alone. Won't it taste a lot better to eat them in their home environment? Of course, this was all a lie. The Northern Luhar Kingdom was the country that had been founded by that fool, Molon. After that, I'll go to Nahama to eat the cactus scorpions. This, too, was a lie. 200 years ago, Anise, who had been revered as a saint by the Holy Empire of Uras, after wandering around the world, she had been last sighted in the heart of the Nahama Desert. It seems that you really like crustaceans. How about we get some lobster for dinner today? This was no way this was a coincidence. But for now, Eugene wanted to hear what he wanted. To think I'd meet such an honored personage in such a shabby place. Even in all of Pentagon, this restaurant is quite famous. Sorry to interrupt a meal between pupil and teacher, so I will get to the point. I'm promising you the position of the commander of the court wizards. I can guarantee this offer with my own name. I believe that should be outside your capabilities for now. In ten years, I will be the king of Aroth. That's a dangerous thing to say. The current king is in good health. Please don't get the wrong idea. I have already received a promise from my father regarding the succession of the throne. Not only is my right of succession unrivaled, but the people of Aroth also trust in me and have no doubt that I will become their next king. The court wizards are under the direct command of the king. Of course, it will take some mediation in respect of the parliament. But if it's you, Sir Eugene, then I'm sure that in ten years you would have obtained sufficient qualifications for the role. Although I'm grateful for your high esteem, Crown Prince, you can't be sure of what my magic level is at, correct? It's because you and the Red Tower Master have been quite thorough in hiding it. Now, why would you hide it? I suspect you're hiding it because there's a good reason for you to do so. Since you haven't revealed it directly, I can only make guesses. Your mana density is way above normal witchcraft. Oh my, have you comprehended the eternal whole? Do you really need me to reply to that? If you say something like that, then you're practically admitting it. I can't do something like lying to the crown prince, right? However, that doesn't mean I have any intentions of telling you the whole truth. It's certainly a prestigious role, but I have other plans in mind. If that's the case, then what about knowledge? As you are already aware, the wise Sienna wrote witchcraft as a complete set of three volumes. The first of these is stored in Akron, and the other two volumes are stored in the royal treasury. These words surprised both Loberian and Eugene. According to Mare, the final two volumes of witchcraft should still be in Sienna's possession. Since when did the royal family get their hands on those? 
please don't get the wrong idea. The volumes stored in the royal treasury are only copies that Lady Sienna left us as a gift to the royal family. Even the royal family is still unaware of Lady Sienna's current whereabouts and that of the original two volumes. Are you saying that you will let me see your copy of witchcraft? Well, it's impossible to do so immediately. Witchcraft is the greatest grimoire in the history of magic. While it is true that I am favoured by His Majesty, when it comes to witchcraft, even if it's me, I'm still unable to make use of it as I wish. However, once I ascend the throne, I will be a little freer to act on my desires. However, I'm afraid that it will be difficult to extend the same offer to you, Red Tower Master. It seems like I've finally made you a tempting offer. For the past two years, Eugene had surely felt what a truly amazing grimoire witchcraft was. Since the single volume stored in Akron was already so incredible, how extraordinary would the remaining two volumes be? And it wasn't just that. There might be other clues leading to Sienna's current location in the remaining two volumes of witchcraft. Eugene knew Sienna very well. Even if Aroth's royal family hadn't spotted the clues she had left behind, if it was Eugene, he might still be able to find them. If you were saying that it's impossible for now, I'll be sure to stop by Aroth after the Crown Prince has ascended the throne. Let's talk about this matter again at that point. So you want to leave your path open? If that's the case, I will send you a letter when my coronation has been confirmed. Thank you for thinking so highly of me. The summer practically flew by. Mir was reading Eugene's thesis with wide open eyes. The thesis was meant to be just for self-satisfaction, a thesis that was never intended to be published but that didn't decrease its value. The cores and the eternal whole have reached a perfect combination through this. There might be a few innate imperfections, but structurally, it's reached a level where I can't see any way to improve it, Mir observed. Uh, amazing. It's a bit selfish to publish a thesis that has info only you can use, but regardless, it's perfect. When will you be leaving? The day after tomorrow. With your personality, I thought for sure you would be leaving tomorrow. I'm only human. I need to at least rest before a long travel. Also, they said that they'd hold a farewell party for me at the Red Tower of Magic. That must be so nice for you. You will go there and eat a lot of delicious food. You'll also be receiving congratulations from all your friends. Do you remember what you said to me a few months ago? Didn't you say that you would have something to tell you before I leave? Yes, I do. First, let me ask you something. The things we've talked about, are you able to pass them on to someone else? Geez, are you really suspecting me right now? This is because you're afraid I might have told another wizard what we've talked about when discussing your thesis. Well, have you ever said anything? No, I haven't. Do you know how much those sons of bitches, the Green Tower Master, and a few others have been harassing me when you're not around? Even if those bastards tried to dissect both witchcraft and me, I would never say anything. Why not? Because I've been programmed not to do so. This isn't something special regarding you. It's a function meant to preserve the safety and privacy of all wizards permitted to enter Akron. I have stored the recorded information and conversation of all the wizards who have done research in Sienna's Hall, in the deepest depths of witchcraft's storage files. Unless those bastards decide to destroy witchcraft, there's no way that Sir Eugene's information will be exposed to the outside world. If you're going to be that thorough about it, make sure not to let what I'm about to tell you to leak to anyone else. I've already said I'll do that. How many times must you ask me? I reincarnated. What kind of bullshit is that? I said that I reincarnated, and I've still got the memories from my past life. Is this supposed to be a joke? It's so unfunny that I can't even force myself to laugh. My name in my past life was Hamel Dynas. I was the stupid Hamel. Are you being serious when you say that? Find it hard to believe? Although it's hard to believe, if what you're saying is true, then I can understand many confusing things about you. It had only been a little over two years since Eugene started learning magic. Was it possible for someone like him to have comprehended witchcraft in such a short time? Stupid Hamel was a unique individual in many ways. The wise Sienna grew up in the forest of the elves and learned magic from them. The brave Molin was the son of the tribal chief of the Bayar tribe. That was especially recognized for his skill in battle. The faithful Anise was a saintess candidate who had been carefully nurtured by the cardinals of the Holy Empire of Eurus. The great Vermouth was. He was a slave. Vermouth was one of a group of slaves who had been abducted by the demons to be used as sacrifices. To somehow survive, he stole a sword from a demon. And even though it was his first time even wielding a sword, he managed to cut his way through dozens of demons and black wizards responsible for transporting the slaves. Honestly, I always thought of that story as an exaggeration, because that's what myths are usually made up of. Although I didn't see it happen myself, it was probably the truth. That guy was a real monster. 
The stupid Hamel was particularly unique even among that party of heroes. He didn't stand out from the start, and he didn't even come from a special background. After his village was destroyed by a monster attack, he picked up a sword to survive. He then became a mercenary along with others to get his revenge on these monsters and the demon kings. Although he came from the most ordinary background in this party of heroes, he grew to the point where he could stand shoulder to shoulder with the others in just a few short years. If you really are the reincarnation of Hamel, then I can understand your inexplicable growth rate. He stands out the most among all the heroes when it comes to how much he grew over the journey. Not necessarily. I was always trying to surpass Vermouth. Since I didn't even have the chance to learn magic, I gave up on it at the very start, and from then on, I turned my attention to becoming proficient with swords and spears. I wanted to defeat Vermouth so badly that I even went and trained my fists as well. However, I was never once able to beat Vermouth, not even once. But from an ordinary person's point of view, hadn't Hamel still been quite the absurd monster himself? What's the point of being called a genius by others? All I wanted was to defeat that bastard at least once in my life, but until I died, I never managed to get one over on him. You looked up at Hamel's face and said that he had a charm like that of an untomable beast. Didn't you feel even a tiny bit embarrassed saying that? How could you point at your own face in such a ridiculous thing? What's wrong with that? In my previous life, I was pretty attractive. <sighs> Why have you suddenly told me something like this? If you're expecting something from me, then it's useless. I really don't know anything about Lady Sienna's current whereabouts. I didn't tell you this because I wanted information. It's just that I've been looking at you for the past two years. Although I already vaguely felt this when I first met you, I've realized that you resemble Sienna, both in looks and in personality. That's because I was created based on Lady Sienna's childhood version of herself. Did I cross the line again? I will allow it just this once, because you, I mean Hamel, Lady Sienna's comrade, deserve respect. Do you believe that Sienna is dead? There's no way she's dead. I also believe that I don't feel like that chick Sienna was someone who would have just passed away without even leaving behind a will. Sienna, Malin, and Anise, they all must still be alive somewhere in the world. That's what I believe. So I just need to go and find them. Don't you miss Sienna as well? I definitely do. Then that's even more reason for me to go and drag her back here. Sienna is also quite the bitch. Don't you think so? After all, she's been neglecting the cute familiar she made herself for the past 200 years. Don't insult Lady Sienna. It's fine for me to insult her. Do you know how many insults I had to endure from Sienna 300 years ago? That damn brat. She called me a bastard and an asshole no matter what I did. Sir Eugene, can you swear an oath about the fact that in your past life, you were the stupid Hamel in front of witchcraft? Yeah, fine. But can you stop adding that damn stupid in front of my name? On my name as Eugene Lionheart, I am the reincarnation of Hamel Dynas. I swear on my blood and my name as a Lionheart that there is no falsehood in what I have just told you. After Lady Sienna went into seclusion, several wizards dissected both witchcraft and me on numerous occasions. Hidden in the deepest location of witchcraft storage files, I will also store the news you have shared with me in that hidden location so that no one will be able to find out about it. And what I will be revealing is also something that no one in Aroth has ever heard. What is it? About a week before she went into seclusion, on this very floor, and Lady Sienna was also there with me. Then suddenly, Lady Sienna collapsed. She told me that one of her familiars had been killed. Someone had broken in Hamel's grave. I have a grave? Not long after that, Lady Sienna suddenly disappeared, and I hid this conversation in the deepest depths of witchcraft. I didn't want to distress Lady Sienna by needlessly revealing something I shouldn't have. Since you, Sir Eugene, are also Hamel, I feel you deserve to know. My grave, I haven't heard even a hint about it. I always thought that my corpse had been annihilated by Belial's curse. A lich's curse does annihilate both the body and the soul, but your soul remained fully intact and was even reincarnated. If that's the case, then your corpse should have also remained intact. I have my suspicions that Sienna might have been involved in it. It looked like his corpse really had been hidden away somewhere in this world. But where? If it's a tomb, weren't they usually built in a place that was deeply connected to the deceased person? There was no way it would be in the Demon King of Incarceration's castle, so could it be in my homeland? Sir Eugene? I knew you were following me, but I was ignoring you on purpose. You seem to be in a bad mood. Does it have to do with me? Yes. I've heard that you will be leaving Aroth to go to Luhar and Nahama. 
I'm worried. The Northern Luhar Kingdom is close to Helmuth. So, why does that matter? The Lionheart clan's influence won't be able to stretch that far. Luhar prohibited the entry of demons and black wizards, but since five years ago, the royal family has become especially stubborn about it. There are a lot of demons in Helmuth. Among them, some seek to go against the will of my master. In the first place, the Demon King of Incarceration is not the only Demon King who reigns in Helmuth. By that, do you mean to say that the Demon King of Destruction is preparing to make a move? That isn't the case at all. The Demon King of Destruction, well, he doesn't enjoy violence. Also, he has always shown respect to the Demon King of Incarceration. The Demon King of Destruction was a first-ranked Demon King. They had only ever seen the Demon King of Destruction moving from afar. Eugene still couldn't be sure exactly what he had seen at that moment. All he knew was that he had seen a color moving. No one suggested to fight or kill him. If Anise hadn't used prayer magic, everyone's minds might have fallen into an unsightly frenzy. However, even if the Demon King of Incarceration doesn't move, and the Demon King of Destruction keeps his silence, that doesn't mean that all demons will stay quiet. Demons are naturally violent. Many of them are sick of this peace that has been going on for hundreds of years. Haha. <laughs> it might sound ridiculous for me to be the one to say this, but the demons aren't a group that can truly be satisfied by peace. Are you saying they might attack me, despite their master's peace agreement? I'm just saying that there may be many demons who think this way. Among the high-ranking demons, a few wish to become one of the new demon kings. Since the original five, demon kings have shrunk down to just two. Duke Giabella is eagerly eyeing such a position. Can't they just hold a vote for it? Haha, <laughs> the demons are a group that would just smash the ballot box if they feel that an election wouldn't go the way they want. With the skills I currently possess, can I face a high-ranking demon and win? Eugene doubted that he would come out alive and started to think about postponing his journey to Luhar till he became stronger and went to Nahama first instead. Thank you for this warning. I might try going to the Luhar at another point in time. As for Nahama, you should be careful in the desert. Because of the sandstorms? No, because of Amelia Merwin. But the Demon King of Incarceration has declared the Lionheart Clan a friend. If Amelia Merwin, who has made a personal contract with the Demon King, were to harm me, wouldn't that make the Demon King of Incarceration a liar for calling the clan his friends? She's special. She was, even before she made a contract with the Demon King of Incarceration, an amazing black wizard. Among all his servants, Amelia Merwin especially enjoys a lot of freedom. If you come across Amelia Merwin, you can try and give her this. If you give this to her, no matter what you might have done to her, she won't harm you. What is this? As you can see, it's just an envelope. Can I examine its contents? Feel free. There is nothing inside. The contents aren't really necessary, Sir Eugene. What's important is that you will be holding onto a letter that I wrote myself. I might not be able to handle the sort of threats that might show themselves in Luhar, but I can deal with Amelia Merwin's grudge against you. So if you intend to go to Nahama, please take this with you. What is it that you want from me? Your hate for black wizards is unavoidable. However, I would like it if you could at least hold a little affection towards me. By any chance, are you gay? Huh? What? It's just a bit suspicious that you're treating me so well. Although I don't really have any inclinations to that side of things. Since the Black Tower Master has been so kind to me, I can't help but feel a little distressed and worried. Hold on. I'm a little flustered right now. Please don't have that sort of misunderstanding. It's just, I only want to build a friendly relationship with you. Merely as one human to another. Yes. So please don't get the wrong idea. Isn't that the case with everyone here, not just myself? You might still be young, but we all know that you have a lot of potential, Sir Eugene. I will receive what you've given me with gratitude. I would like to invite you to my farewell party tomorrow. Ah, but having said that, please don't actually show up. I'd like to invite you, but if I did see the Black Tower Master show up to my farewell party tomorrow, I feel like I'd be more upset than pleased by it. I won't be going, so please don't worry about it. Thank you for saying that. I am impressed by your generosity. Why did you invite me? It's not like we're completely unfamiliar with each other. What about the rest of the Tower Masters who aren't here? Why ask when you already know the answer? Don't get annoyed of the Green Tower Master and the Commander of the Court Wizards. They are only acting this way because they are interested in you. It looks like I am not talented enough for you then. Although I am a bit interested, I'm not the type who would shamelessly try and steal away the Red Tower Master's disciple. Although I was sure, it looks like you haven't invited Balzac. Yes. Well, my master would also be displeased by it. One annoying person is enough. Could I ask what type of person the Black Tower Master is? I've heard that he used to be part of the Blue Tower of Magic in the past. 
Even in the past, Balzac was mysterious and it was hard to tell what he was thinking. He suddenly left the Blue Tower and went to Helmuth. He said he wanted to broaden his knowledge. At the time, I was inferior to Balzac, but I was able to become the Blue Tower Master because he left. Ten years later, Balzac became the Black Tower Master after returning from Helmuth. He could have become the most outstanding Tower Master in the history of the Blue Tower of Magic. However, I guess that wasn't enough for him. It's not like I can't understand why that might be. No matter how amazing a human's magic is, in the end, it's impossible to surpass the magic of a Demon King. So I've heard that you're going to Nahama. Yes. Make sure to hide the fact that you're a Lionheart once you've entered. My master also told me to do that. Currently, things there are unsettled. The assassins of Nahama have been seen wandering around during the day rather than solely at night. Hopefully, they won't try to persecute you just because the Lionheart clan is part of the Keel Empire. But, there's nothing wrong with keeping your guard up regardless. I'll be sure to keep your words in mind. No matter how you looked at it, a cloak with fur stood out in a sweltering desert, but among the various enchantments built into it, the Cloak of Darkness also had a simple transfiguration enchantment, which was perfect to concile Eugene's identity. Eugene received a map of Nahama from Lobarian. It was a magical map that had been linked to the spatial coordinates of wherever Eugene was standing, allowing him to know precisely where in the world he was. Currently, Eugene was in the western end of Nahama. If he went quite a ways north from here, he would eventually arrive in Turas. Hamel's hometown, the village in the frontier region of Turas, had already become part of the desert. Turas was just a small kingdom. They had no choice but to retreat in the face of these Kalemitu sandstorms and the desertification of the land. Only an idiot would be ignorant of the fact that humans were behind the desertification caused by these sandstorms. The ones responsible for these sandstorms are mercenaries. My old comrades, wait for me, I will find you all.